Uh, okay, uh, let's begin. So welcome to today's tutorial and uh, and hope you can uh, get something interesting and have a conversation or discussion with our speakers. And uh, our tutorial's name is uh, Simulating Human Society with Larger Language Model Agents, City Social Media and uh, Economic System. Uh, our speakers uh, is from the joint team of Tsinghua University, uh, Renmin University of China, and uh, University of Science and Technology of China. So uh, first, uh, briefly introduce our team. Um, my name is Chen Gao from Tsinghua University, and uh, our member and other speaker includes uh, Xu Feng Li from uh, Tsinghua University, uh, Chen Xu from uh, Renmin University of China, and Professor Xiang Wang and Professor Xiang Nanke from University of Science and Technology and Professor Yongli from Tsinghua University. Uh, this is the outline of today's uh, tutorials with five uh, sections and uh, one TV uh, coffee break. The first is about the background of today's tutorial uh, to introduce the, the, the interest, uh, important fundamental knowledge about LM agent based simulation, especially for the simulation in human society. And uh, Next three talks about it's about a specific simulation in the in the different scenarios, including the online behaviors and the social and economic system, and the last is the city system. And uh, at last, we will have an open discussion to uh, discuss the future work and interesting uh, directions and prom promising uh, research topics in this area. Okay, so the first uh, the part is, is presented by me, and I will uh, give the background and the fundamental knowledge of our agent based simulation. Uh, first, I want to recap the, the background of the simulation in social science. Uh, actually, in 1996, there is a book named the Social Science Micro Simulation. This book is about the, the summary of the various works that use simulation, especially micro simulation to do the research of social science. So it's a book from social scientists. And uh, we can uh, see the right the two right figures show uh, a typical example of the agent-based simulation or micro simulation, the CLL uh, automata. Uh, this simulation framework uh, defines the role and the mechanism of the each individual, in each individual agent behaves and how the different agents interact with each other and then finally to observe the population level or system level phenomena. And the, the, the third picture shows a recent popular work about the generative agents from Stanford. In this work, the authors deployed 25 uh, agents with large language model and try to observe the social behaviors uh, uh, with the generative agents. The authors do not set a specific goal of the agent, but uh, finally, the, uh, there emerges interesting phenom phenomena from the population level. For example, the agents will form the activity or form the party or share some information. So we can see that uh, through simulation, we can uh, observe interesting social phenomena, and uh, it serves as a fundamental tool for the research of social science. Okay, uh, let's uh, find, uh, recap the concept of agent-based simulation and agent-based modeling. The agent-based modeling is a well-known concept in many areas, including multi-agent system, uh, complex system, or economics, or uh, each, uh, a lot of uh, areas. They use the same concept of agent-based modeling. In agent-based modeling, there are agents, environment, and inaction. Uh, Okay, first to define the environment and then how uh, and define how the agent interact with each other and interact with the environment and try to observe some uh, population level or aggregate level uh, phenomenon. So that's the uh, basic concept of agent based methodology. And uh, we can uh, regard the agent based modeling a kind of macro, ma uh, micro simulation. And it's different uh, with system-based macro simulation. Uh, it is kind of bottom-up framework that defines how the individual agents to uh, change in their states to, and then try to observe population level phenomena. So agent-based simulation is ubiquitous but requires uh, accurate modeling. 
and the distribution for the agent. If the agent is not defined accurately, the system level or population level phenomenon cannot be well observed or emerged. So why uh, can the L LM support simulation? Uh, uh, we can see an uh, interesting uh, comparison with the GPT model with uh, different animals. The GPT-3 has about uh, more than about 170 billion uh, parameters. It's close to the hedgehog's brain. And GPT-4 uh, parameter is close to a zero. And we know the GPT models are increasingly uh, developing. And uh, maybe the next and or next version at this rate, uh, it may only have be a few years before you reach and surpass the scale of the a real human's brain's parameter size. So if we have a such a strong and fundamental tool has the same parameter size or same ability level with the human, we can consider the OM as a very good agent to do the research of agent-based simulation and modeling. To uh, have a quick summary, uh, we think the agent-based simulation uh, requires the agent to perceive and sense the environment to obtain the context, context of the environment, including the textual environment and the common sense about the environment. And uh, the, then the agent can do some reasoning uh, with human-like memory and high cognitive ability close to human, and finally take actions to plan a schedule and generate content, or generate any, any kind of behaviors. So the LMS will fit the paradigm of the agent-based modeling and simulation. Uh, uh, in detail, we, we summarize uh, 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 the key abilities and the key re requirements, the key requirements of agent-based modeling and the key abilities of the LM agent. And we find that the LM agents well correspond to the requirement of the agent-based modeling. So it's a good solution for the answer, a good answer and a good solution for the, for the, for the problem. Uh, for the agent-based simula simulation requires the uh, agent to have a sociability, autonomy, and reactivity, and proactiveness. And the LM agent with a good uh, interface design and internal mechanism, they can uh, behave well in perception, uh, reasoning, decision making, and self evolution. And uh, let's discuss in detail. So, for the requirements for agent based simulation, the agent should first be able to operate without the direct intervention of humans or others, which is important in real world applications, such as, such as in different simulation tactics. The, the, you should, the first requirement is autonomy. The second is sociability. The agent is not alone. Each agent is not a sole object. The agent should be able to interact with other agents and maybe possibly some real humans to interact with real humans to complete the assigned goals. So this, this is the second aspect. The third, the third is a reactivity. The agent should be able to perceive the environment and respond quickly to the changing, dynamic changing environment. The environment is not steady. So the agent should be responding to the changes in the environment. The fourth is proactiveness. The agent should be able to exhibit goal-directed behavior by taking the initiative instead of just responding to the environment. So the agent should have some uh, Redefine the goal or try to maximize maximize some reward. So this is four, these are four requirements of agent-based simulation. And we can see how uh, the existing methodologies try to uh, meet the requirement and uh, what's, uh, what about their limitations. Uh, we can uh, summarize the existing methodologies in agent-based modeling into four kinds of uh, approaches. The first is a very simple predefined rule. The, these methods define the ex explicit rules that govern agent behaviors. And these rules are typically based on logical or conditional sentiments that dictate how agents react to specific situations or inputs. And uh, another kind of uh, approach is uh, symbolic uh, equations uh, with algebraic equations or differential equation or other mathematical Formulations. For these methods, uh, they uh, they define some variables to define to to uh, refer to the state uh, of the agents, and uh, then use the equations to describe how the agent one agent's variable 
affect another agent variable. So it's about the equations of the different variables of the agents. And uh, the third approach is, is uh, the stochastic modeling, because the previous two previous methods cannot uh, generate randomness uh, in the behavior. So these methods introduce uh, randomness and uh, probability into agent decision making, uh, which is useful for capturing the uncertainty and the variability in the real world uh, systems. So this is the third kind of approaches. The fourth, uh, for, fourth kind of approaches is machine learning uh, model, model, models, uh, including the supervised models trying to generate behaviors or some reinforced learning uh, based methods try to maximize some reward or goal and to take the action that can maximize the goal. So we summarize the existing works into four aspects and then discuss the limitations of, of these methods. Uh, the first is the uh, actually there's a lot of, of works that use a very simple agent in their work. The agent uh, simple user simple architecture is not enough to to cope with the complex tasks in the real world applications. And this uh, third, uh, second challenge is, is that it is difficult to develop a general agent that can uh, support simulations across different environments. When a diff when the environment changes or deploy the agents in the to a Different environments it requires the the, the it requires a, a, a redesign of the agent. So it's, it is a, another a limitation. The third limitation is that the existing methods cannot support uh, integrative uh, simulation in the real world. So uh, these are the three key uh, limitations of the existing works, and then we explain how LM agents abilities correspond to this and address this. Uh, limitations. And for the uh, percep uh, perception, the LM agent is able to comprehend, perceive, and respond to diverse needs, emotions, and attitudes with different contexts, for example, in social social simulation uh, from the first view site. And for reasoning and decision-making, uh, for the LM agents with only limited guidance, the regulations or goals, the agents can autonomously take actions, make plans, or, uh, or even achieve new goals without the need for uh, implicit programming and the predefined rules. And uh, further, the LM agents can uh, adapt, adapt to learn from the context and modify their responses or actions according, accordingly. They can well adapt to the dynamic changes of the environments. So these are four uh, uh, critical abilities and how and they can well address the limitations in existing four kinds of approaches. And we have also uh, well uh, organized the, the recent papers uh, try to use our agents for simulation. Uh, we first divide the existing works according to the different domain. Okay, some are social domain uh, with the social science simulation or economic system simulation. And uh, also has, uh, it has also has some works for the physical domain, including mobility behavior, transportation, or infrastructure usage behavior simulation. And uh, for the assignment domain, uh, it is also very interesting, including the information system, such as a uh, recommender system, uh, web system, such as uh, is a browser simulation or the online social network simulation. So uh, there are some other works uh, not focused on sim uh, the, the same or the, uh, exactly one domain. Uh, we call it a hybrid domain because it involves the simulation uh, from social domain or physical domain. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the given social domain, there are also two kinds of environments. Some works focus on the virtual environment. Uh, it means the social network is fake or predefined. It's not from a real social network. And uh, these works can uh, simulate how the the agents interact with each other. Uh, for example, in, in some uh, social uh, games, such as wealth, well or worth game. Uh, so in such a virtual predefined game environment, uh, the AL images can emerge some interesting behaviors with social interaction. And some uh, work are using the real data to, to define the social network environment. So it's based on the social, real social network websites and the deploy agent to simulate their behaviors in such a social environment. And also there are a lot of works on physical and cyber and hybrid. They 
for example, in the physical domain, they can simulate how the agent navigates in the real world map and how the simulated vertical drivers in the real city environment. And for the cyber domain, you can simulate the human behaviors uh, in the web and also simulate the behaviors uh, with the uh, interaction on an interaction with the recommended system. And for a hybrid, uh, uh, some work is focused on the uh, Sandbrook's social life. So we define the uh, two, two dimensions. First dimension is the domain. The second dimension is the, whether the environment is real or virtual. So this is a organization of existing works. And uh, we want to take some uh, important example to show the, the different simulation goals of these this works. We take some social simulation as an example. Okay, we divide the existing works to three, three uh, groups. The first group of works try to simulate the social net network dynamics, such as how the information propagate, pop propagate uh, in the social network to observe the message propagation, to observe some trends, to observe some, you know, some propagation of different uh, opinions, opinion, opinion dynamics in such a social network. So this is the first kind of work. The second kind of work uh, focuses more on the, the interactive behavior among two users or several users. Uh, for example, they can form a, a group of uh, individual agents to uh, finish some cooperative tasks, such as write uh, software or Finishes some of the specific tasks. So it, it, it can also kind of regard it as a, as a small society because the agent should be able to cooperate with each other to finish some complex tasks. And the last one is the individual social behavior. It, uh, it, it is a, uh, involves some work from the computational, computational social science. They use the agent to obtain the response from a specific uh, questionnaire or survey or uh, question to observe the how individual agent with LLM respond to the environment and the context in a social network or social environment. So this, these are three groups of existing works. We also take economic simulation as an example. Okay, uh, for individual behavior in economic system, the researchers focus on rationality, decision bias, and the expectation. The test the researchers test how LM behaves and how, uh, what about the difference with the real human and the LM agent in specific economic uh, situation, situations. They also uh, observe the, uh, try to find the interesting uh, insights from the interactive behavior, such as game theory. You know, in game theory, there are two or more users to, uh, to respond to specific questions. Okay, so the researchers use LM agents to do such experiments and try to observe whether the LM shows the similar phenomenon with real human. Also, there are some artworks uh, from some more general and economic system level phenomenon. The design environment with interactions, trading, and markets, and to reduce the real world economic phenomenon uh, with LM agents and to predefined economic environment. So these are examples of how LM agents used in social simulation and economic simulation. And actually for uh, deploying the LM agents into simulation, uh, there are key, some key steps. And I, I believe the, fir uh, the further, uh, in further the, uh, uh, speakers, the later speakers will uh, introduce more details of how the, in different, in different uh, simulation tasks, how the existing works try to design better uh, real environment and better design the uh, agent and uh, try to observe the phenomenon. For the first is uh, environment construction and interface, right? For example, uh, to give a game environment or real uh, environment or sandbox environment. So the environment, it involves the world and the rule, the basic rule of the world. Also the interface, to provided by the environment is also very important. With the interface, the agent can observe and receive signals and the feedback from the environment. And their actions further will affect the state of the world. So the interface uh, is the, the interaction between, uh, provided interaction between the agent and the environment. Also about the 
interaction between different agents. Uh, the second is to human alignment and personalization. The agent should be heterogeneous. The agent should not be the same for, for human environments. The different agents have different behaviors. The personalization is very important to uh, behave like a specific human and to do personalization. And uh, the third step is very important to simulate actions with uh, good design and planning, memory, and uh, reflection. So it involves some uh, mechanism in the agent internal state. And uh, lastly, it's about evaluation. Actually, for simulation, the, uh, the evaluation can uh, be in different aspects. The first is a real willingness validation with real human data. It means whether your Designed agents can reproduce the real world, real humans' behaviors. This is the first kind of evaluation. But sometimes we do not require very accurate simulation for, for each agent. We just want to observe the same trend or same uh, qualitative uh, analysis, qualitative results of a real human. We do not require very quantitative the, the evaluation for the realness. And the second to, is to provide explanations for the simulated behaviors. The agent should be able to provides uh, accurate and reasonable explanations, which is close to the real human, such as in game theory. In game theory simulation, the agent is required to provide the explanations of why they choose specific actions. So we can test whether the actions, explanations is the, uh, is the same, is the, uh, are the same with the real human. And uh, we also focus on some ethic evaluation about the uh, system. If, uh, for example, if we can simulate the each user's future behavior on the social network, maybe it involves some concern about the ethic. Okay, so this is a uh, background and fundamental uh, uh, knowledge about the use of LM agents for simulation. And uh, the next, we have we all have some uh, uh, talks about the specific area. Uh, first is online behavior simulation, and second is social and economic simulation, and the third is city system simulation. Okay, so let's welcome our next speaker to uh, to our uh, Professor Xu Chen, and uh, he's talking about online behavior simulation. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Xu Chen from Renmin University of China, and in this section I will talk about online user behavior simulation based on RM-based agents. In the history of artificial intelligence, uh, we can see uh, there are major, uh, there are mainly two study paradigms. The first one is based on real-world data set. For example, in the field of NLP, CV, and speech, we can see uh, there are a lot of real-world data set. And if you uh, search this uh, fields in, on Hugging Face, we can see uh, there are a lot of real-world data set you can get. And uh, uh, in, in, this, uh, in, this, in this domain, uh, people can design various models to uh, to improve this field by benchmarking different uh, uh, different areas. So in this paradigm, uh, different users uh, can uh, uh, build different data sets. And the... okay, so uh, okay, uh, the bell. The backbone of this uh, this study paradigm is that we have a lot of real world data set, and even for the for the problem, we don't have a real world data set. We can easily build the data set by uh, quoting human annotators. And the second uh, the, the second important study paradigm is based on simulation environment. For example, in the fields of uh, reinforcement learning and uh, uh, and the other domains, uh, we can uh, first build a, a model based on a simulator, and uh, then re and then move the uh, train the model to real world environment. Uh, the requirement of this paradigm is that the uh, the, the data generation paradigm should be uh, should be objective and uh, can be easily uh, it can be easily modeled so that the simulator can be very similar with the real world environment. In addition to the fields of NLP, CV, and the reinforcement learning, there are also many uh, human-centered applications. For example, user behavior analysis and uh, uh, the, the fields of uh, 
recommender system, social networking, and uh, user behavior tracking uh, uh, all this uh, uh, all this uh, user uh, all these domains. And uh, uh, in this uh, in this studies, uh, we can see if we uh, if we study uh, if we use real world data set to study this these problems, we can face several problems. For example, uh, we cannot collect enough uh, enough real world data set because of the user privacy can can commercial com conf confidentially and uh, other uh, identical problems. If we would like to build a, a simulation environment, uh, this is also very uh, hard because we need to simulate a user uh, complex decision process. This is not an uh, easy thing. Uh, in the past, there are a lot of uh, studies focused on how to uh, build a user behavior uh, simulator. Uh, for example, in the uh, in this conference called UMAP, there are uh, thirty one years uh, in the uh, in the, for this conference, and uh, a lot of work on this conference is focused on how to build a user simulator. And there are also uh, some uh, international workshops and books which is uh, which aims to build a user behavior simulator. Well, there are many studies on building uh, user behavior simulator. There, there still remains several uh, open problems. The first one is uh, existing problems usually simplify the environments. For example, existing work uh, mostly focused only on one scenario. For example, the uh, recommender system or the social network. However, in real world scenarios, different user behaviors can uh, mutually influence, influence each other. And uh, if we only focus on one scenario, the simulation result can be imperfect. The second one is uh, existing simulation process mostly use uh, inner product or uh, multi-layer perception or some very simple, uh, very simple uh, network to predict the user uh, decision process. This is uh, too simple for uh, for our uh, human uh, complex cognitive process. And the last one is existing uh, existing simulator mostly uh, have to rely on real world data set. Uh, for example, uh, in, in the red picture, we can see uh, existing simulator have to use some real world data set to initialize the simulator and then use the train the simulator to generate more data. So there is a problem that if we do not have a sufficient real world data set, then the simulator can be inaccurate. However, if we have enough data set, then we, whether we need the simulator is a problem. So this is a, zero, uh, is a chicken and egg problem. Uh, ideally, if we can achieve zero shot simulation, then the simulation paradigm can be totally uh, altered and may uh, achieve better simulation results. Uh, with the development of large run models, uh, we can see uh, after training on a large amount of uh, web knowledge, uh, LM can exhibit very uh, important features. For example, it can uh, it can achieve human level intelligence on some tasks, and it can uh, exhibit surprisingly strong generation capabilities. Uh, these two important characters just uh, can uh, solve the bow mentioned the three limitations of existing user behavior simulation paradigm. However, uh, use the, using the uh, using RM to simulate user behaviors also uh, may also face several challenges. The first one is how to uh, prof profile different users, and the, the third one is how to make RM dynamically involved in, in the environments and uh, what user behaviors we should simulate. From the global perspective, we have to uh, better organize different uh, user uh, users in the system, and uh, we also have to design the simulation process, and uh, and also we can uh, uh, with what functions should be uh, incorporated in the simulation process. So, uh, in order to solve these challenges, in uh, in the in the beginning of the last year, we built a user behavior simulator uh, based on RM based agents. The uh, the, the overall architecture of the agent in our simulator is composed of four modules. The first one is RM uh, itself, and the second one is the profile module. The third and the fourth one are the memory and action modules. In the profile module, the users can really indicate different uh, characters of the users. For example, the ID, gender, a trace uh, interest of the uh, of the users. By indicating these characters, the agent can follow 
uh, the the character of the of of, of the user and uh, behave like a real human. Uh, the second module is the memory module, uh, which is composed of sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Uh, in the action module, the agent have to decide uh, which action should be taken and when to take this action. For example, uh, they can uh, they can search movies in the on the uh, recommender system or passively receive recommendations recommendations from the system. They can also uh, the agent can also chat with each other and uh, uh, when agent can. Uh, can post the messages on the social network so that his friends can receive their uh, messages. Here is an example of the profile module. Uh, the, uh, the users can indicate the name, gender, uh, age, traits, uh, career, interest, and features of the agent. And uh, uh, in this simulator, one can uh, use different uh, uh, methods to uh, initialize the profile of the agent. For example, you can when the number of agent is not large, you can uh, just uh, handcraft the profile. You can uh, this method is very flexible and uh, uh, but it's labor intensive. Uh, when there are a lot of uh, agents, one can use GPT to to generate the profiles. Uh, of course, one can also use the uh, user profile in the real world in real world data side to uh, profile the agents. In the memory module, uh, there are three sub components. The first one is the accessory module. Uh, it's uh, it's mainly aims to process the raw observation into more condensed and informative signals, and the processed information will be put into the short term memory. If the uh, if similar information are repeatedly uh, put into the short-term memory, then it will be transformed into the long-term memory. Otherwise, the information will be uh, quickly forgotten. In the long-term memory, the agent can self-reflect to generate high-level and abstract information to guide the user future behaviors. And uh, uh, if the, uh, uh, in the long-term memory, the information can also be forgot according to some probabilities. Uh, all the, the whole memory mechanism uh, uh, we, it uh, follows the human cognitive uh, process in, in the following paper. Okay, uh, in the action module, uh, there are three types of user behaviors. The first one is uh, user behaviors in the recommender system. In this system, uh, the agent can actively search movies. Uh, uh, the second one is uh, they can also passively receive recommendation from the uh, from the system. And that they can, uh, if there there are if the, the agent do not interest in uh, different movies, they can also require more recommendations. After watching a movie, uh, the, the user can produce different feelings on the movies and the, feel, uh, the, the feelings will influence the agent future behaviors. The second scenario is about one-to-one -one chatting. Uh, different agents can uh, uh, converse with their friends and uh, they, uh, the, the content of the converse is uh, mainly about the uh, their feelings and opinions about the movies. The third scenario is about a social platform. And uh, in this scenario, one agent can produce some um, uh, messages and send it on the social network. And uh, his, uh, his friends will receive this, uh, their messages. And uh, this message will be stored in, uh, in the agent memory, which will influence their future behaviors and attitudes towards different movies. Uh, here is a complete example of the prompt of, uh, of different uh, agent behaviors. It's composed of four, four components. The first one is the profile of the agent, uh, which is uh, which uh, is composed of the uh, age, the, uh, the the career, and other information. Uh, the second part is the context, which describes the uh, time and the location of the behavior. The third one is the most important one. It's, uh, it's the memory of the agent. It's composed of two, component, two parts. The first one is all the short-term memory. And the second one is relevant information from the long-term memory. They, bo uh, they both uh, they together form the memory uh, component of the, uh, of the memory uh, in the prompt. The last one is the interaction of the current behavior. And this four component form the uh, final prompt of the uh, agent behavior. Uh, because simulating user behaviors uh, using RM based agent is quite inefficient. So in this simulator, we uh, design a, a normal uh, mechanism to schedule different agents. 
uh, in this mechanism, we uh, suppose uh, only a small number of agents can uh, frequently take actions on uh, on each simulation run, but only a small number, uh, a large num a large number of agents only take a small number of actions on each simulation run, and uh, the activity uh, the activity levels of different agents follow a long tail distribution. Uh, in the uh, in the simulation process, one can uh, easily interwind the, the the simulator. For example, uh, you can first run uh, run several rounds of the simulation, and then you stop the simulation and change some characters of the agent and observe the uh, agent behavior before and after uh, changing the the characters of the agent. Uh, you can see as uh, after we change the characters of the agent, the uh, the agent behavior can significantly uh, change. Of course, one can also uh, uh, participate in the agent simulation process that we can build human agent collaborative simulation. Uh, if you are a real human, you can, uh, uh, if the real human participate in the simulation process, uh, he can uh, change, uh, he can converse with the agent and also receive recommendation from the system and also, and can uh, express their opinions and attitudes towards the movie on the social network. Here is the interface of the uh, simulator. In the middle, we present uh, different uh, agents with different colors, and the different colors represent different uh, agent uh, uh, agent actions. Uh, by by the red color, we mean the agent is free, and by uh, green color, we mean the agent is uh, sending messages on the social network. In the left is the uh, the agent characters. We can uh, freely change the characters of different uh, agents and observe different and observe the results in the middle of the uh, simulation process. In the left, we present the uh, statics statistics of different uh, applications in the recommender system. Uh, we can see how many users, how many movies, and uh, what are the most popular movies in this uh, system. Uh, if we Turn to the social uh, social social network. We can see the density of the uh, social network, and uh, can also see uh, uh, what 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 movies are the most popular uh, in the social network. And in the uh, in the right down uh, panel is the log message, and uh, which uh, record all the uh, information in the simulation process. Based on the simulator, we uh, we actually conduct a lot of experiments. Uh, in the first experiment, we would like to uh, evaluate whether the agent memory can produce reasonable results. Uh, in this experiment, we let the agent and human finish the same memory-related task and recruit another group of humans to judge which one is more reasonable. Since in our simulator, uh, in, in the agent, there are three modules. Uh, so we design one task for each module. Uh, the, Results are presented in the following figure. Uh, we can see uh, the, the, the agent can almost achieve comparable performance as compared with the, re, with the agent. In the second uh, experiment, we try to evaluate whether the extracted memory are informative and relevant with the current agent behavior. In this experiment, we randomly sample 15 agent behaviors and recruit three human annotators to evaluate the extracted information. The annotators have to uh, rating the extracted information on two aspects, that is the informativeness and the relevance with the current uh, agent behavior. Uh, the rating range is from one to five. From the result presented in the following figure, we can see uh, the uh, when we use all the memory modules, uh, then the result is the best or comparable with the best. In the third experiment, we aim to evaluate whether the agent can, can separate the real items from the relevant ones. This experiment can be seen, uh, can be seen as the uh, as a discriminative uh, as a discriminative experiment. That is whether our agent can separate the real item and the negative items. In this experiment, we uh, sample twenty users from Wayland's uh, data set, and we combine one. Uh, a ground truth item with B negative items and uh, let the agent to select uh, the ground truth. And we compare the selected, selected item with the ground truth. In the following, we present the 
uh, evaluation result, the, the, the first two column are traditional evaluator, and the Rexim is a, a user behavior simulator developed by Google. And the third column is our uh, simulator. And the last one is the real human results. We can see our simulator uh, with RM-based agent can surpass traditional uh, traditional uh, simulation uh, simulator uh, by a consi considerable margin. And uh, uh, although it's not, uh, do not surpass real human, but the gap is not that large. In the final experiment, we evaluate whether uh, the agent can generate a reasonable uh, user behavior sequence. In the, fall, uh, in the former experiments, we aim to evaluate the discriminative capability of RM-based agent. However, in this experiment, we aim to evaluate the generative capability of RM-based agent. From the uh, result presented in the following figures, we can see uh, a REC agent, uh, which is our simulator, can achieve comparable uh, performance that com as compared with the ground truth, but uh, and is significantly better than uh, Rexim. Uh, we also analyzed the efficiency of the simulation process. Here, I would like to argue that uh, efficiency is a uh, is a big problem in RM based uh, uh, agent simulation uh, because in traditional agent based simulation, uh, we can easily achieve uh, thousand and uh, uh, more larger scale simulation. However, in RM based agent, the simulation scale cannot be that large. So in this uh, in this experiment, we would like to say um, uh, how does the time cost as uh, when the number of agents, when the number of API keys, and uh, uh, when the number of epochs becomes larger. Uh, in this, uh, if you are interested in this part, you can see the you can see the paper. Okay, uh, based on this. Uh, simulator, we also study uh, uh, several uh, interesting social phenomena. The first phenomenon is information cocoon. Uh, in this in this phenomenon, we would like to say uh, uh, whether the information cocoon problem also happen in agent society. Uh, we use entropy to measure the information cocoon problem. Uh, if the entropy is lower, then the information co cocoon problem can be more severe. From the left the top the figure, we can see as the simulation process becomes uh, precede, uh, the, the entropy uh, goes lower and lower. This demonstrates that the information concurrent problem can be more severe as we, uh, as we uh, use more number of uh, simulation run. However, uh, based on this simulation, uh, based on the simulator, we also try to uh, attempt a different measure to alleviate uh, the information concurrent problem. The first one is incorporate some random items in the recommendation list. Uh, from the right top figure, we can see uh, if we add more uh, random items, then the inform information concurrent problem can be uh, better alleviated. However, this leads to another problem that is the user satisfaction of the recommendation result can be lower. So there, there is a trade-off between the uh, information concurrent problem and the user satisfaction. If we use uh, if we use this strategy to incorporate random items into the recommendation results. Another strategy to alleviate this problem is introduce more heterogeneous age friends on the uh, for each agent. That means if we add more connection to each agent, then the uh, the agent can receive more diverse uh, information from their friends. Then their behaviors on the web will be uh, more diverse. Uh, at last, uh, this uh, the recommended the recommended items can be more diverse. So uh, the the entropy uh, which measures the information concurrent problem can be uh, increased. The second uh, uh, phenomenon is social conformity behaviors. In this uh, in this uh, in this problem, we let a different uh, agent to score the same movie, and uh, uh, they can score the movie from one to ten. Uh, in the first round, we can see the rating distribution are, are relative flat. That is, different uh, uh, different users, different agents have uh, more diverse ratings on the same movie. After each round, we let a different agent to exchange their opinions with different with their friends. And as we use more round to simulate a different agent, we can see the opinion, their opinions to the uh, to the movie can converse to uh, the score between six and uh, seven. This 
uh, reproduce the user conformity behaviors. Okay, uh, uh, we believe the uh, user behavior simulation in the future may have uh, many potential impact. Uh, for example, this simulator can uh, can bring more comprehensive, explainable, controllable, efficient, and uh, less uh, expensive recommender model uh, evaluation before uh, real before real develop, uh, development. Uh, for example, in the future, maybe uh, in the real industry, maybe we have three phases. The, the first one is offline training, and after training, uh, after training a model, we can deploy the model in the simulator, and we can call this. Uh, this this phase as near line simulation, and uh, in this simulation process, we can debug the recommender model, and uh, uh, until we we can uh, until we receive a acceptable a perceptible uh, recommender model, and then we deploy the uh, model online. Of course, in this uh, this uh, simulator may also have a significant impact on uh, general recommendation. Uh, reinforcement learning based recommendation, explainable recommendation, and the uh, causal recommendation. Uh, based on this simulation paradigm, we can also study the effect of uh, uh, emergency event uh, in the uh, uh, in the uh, in real world scenarios. Of course, uh, actually, uh, this is just the beginning of using RM based agent to simulate user online behaviors, and if and in the future. I believe uh, a more human-centered application can be benefited from such simulation paradigm. Okay, all the uh, information discussed above has been presented in this slides. Okay, thanks for the for your attention. Okay, uh, our next speaker is uh, Professor Xiang Wang from USDC, and uh, after his talk, we will have a short uh, comment break. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, I'm Bang Xiang, a professor uh, from the University of Science and Technology of China, USTC. And uh, prior to that, I'm a, I was a PhD student and a research fellow uh, from the National University of Singapore, supervised by Professor Chad Hassan. So I'm be very happy back to Singapore and uh, be uh, honored here and uh, share our uh, efforts about the uh, online behavior simulation with uh, LM agents, uh, especially in the recommendation scenarios. So before uh, before we dive into the Okay, sorry. Uh, before we dive into the recommendation scenarios, let me highlight something about the large language model agent and the AGI. So the uh, as we all uh, as we all realize the uh, uh, large language models has been uh, considered as the promising solution towards the AGI artificial general intelligence. Uh, and which has a cognitive, cognitive uh, ability similar to the humans, uh, that is uh, human-like agents. And uh, in other words, AGI can uh, now perform most uh, functions that humans can uh, can do. And uh, likes the uh, uh, we can observe the environments, observe the world, and uh, remember something, and remember the world knowledge into their memories, and uh, to do some reasoning over the over the some complex events, uh, build some tools. And uh, and it it can take some wise actions and uh, towards uh, I think it's a complex goal or the uh, high level goals and uh, uh, it can also do the self reflections to abstract to get abstract knowledge and the high level wisdom and then uh, it can also uh, collaborate with each other and get the uh, and the work together for the complex t tasks. And that is the uh, AGI and the large language model powered things in the towards the uh, AGI. And uh, uh, 
and uh, there is a lot of persons uh, realize the, the importance of the large language model AGI uh, agent, uh, like the Sam Altman, the CEO of the OpenAI, and uh, he says the uh, GPTs and the assistants are the pre precursors of agent and the first step towards the uh, AI agent. And Bill Gates says in the in his blogs and the uh, agents agents uh, are the up, up end of the software industries and uh, bring about the uh, biggest revolutions and in, in the computer science. And uh, I think that there is a good uh, there is a, some big news about the OpenAI and uh, uh, they will release their uh, voice assistants using the GPT. And this is uh, just a, a instance of the agent agent scenes. And so when uh, be aware of the importance of the agent and uh, how can we can create or the construct our human like agent? And the uh, agent is not the new idea or the new concept uh, now, and it has been widely used in the uh, reinforcement learning and the deep reinforcement learning. And so it can in, it can observe the uh, environment and get some the knowledge and get some information and up, up, update their uh, memories and then do some actions. So the first thing is that we need to define the environments. And the uh, what is the environment? It's similar or the identical to the RL scenes. Uh, environment can be the external uh, context or surroundings that agents can uh, can interact with or the do some observations and uh, do some actions. And it can be, and for example, it can be the external uh, database and the knowledge chains things uh, like the web of the uh, I, I think the search engine the things. And it also can be the virtual and the physical environments uh, like the, our the. Uh, the Stanford, I think the Stanford work yeah, generate agent uh, things, all the embodied things. And the second thing is uh, when we have the uh, environments, how how we can get some inf information from the environment. I think this step is the observation things. And uh, what we can do, an uh, agent can get from, uh, can get is the, uh, especially the multimodal perceptions like the image, videos, audio things, and the code, and the user behaviors, and uh, uh, even some uh, size data, like the uh, molecular or cell or genes, and uh, all the some stock and the financial things, financial data. And uh, what they can, what's the when he when the agent uh, once gets the data or the information, what agent can do is to do some action things. Uh, the first thing is uh, it can generate the multimodal output, like the uh, post some image or take some image, the uh, post in the uh, social media things, or the do some embodied things like the robotic things, robotic armors, or the like the dog things, and uh, and it can also do using some external tools like the calculators or the some uh, uh call some APIs. And do and call some APIs of other model things, a uh, small model like. And then, uh, to do these things, and we need to equip, uh, uh, equip the agent with some brains, human-like brains. And it, it, uh, there are two uh, critical concepts in in the brains. The first thing is the memory. What is a memory? It's uh, just to store the sequence of the agent past observations, thoughts. And the actions, and uh, it 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 provides uh, sufficient space for long term and short term memories, and it can get some abstract uh, abstractions of the long term memories and the retrievals of past relevant memories. The second thing is when he gets the memories, it can do some decision making process, and there is also the two step or the two components we can uh, we can design. The first is the planning. And uh, just uh, uh, given a complex task uh, or the given a complex uh, goals, and it can uh, decompose it into some sub uh, sub goals or uh, sub tasks. And uh, the second thing is the reasoning is the do the self uh, self reflections over the past actions and learn from the mistake mistakes and refine them for the future uh, steps. And then improve the quality of the final results. So the personal personalized memory and the reasoning process uh, foster diversity and independence of AI agents. 
And uh, uh, besides the uh, besides the environment scenes, observation actions, and the brain scenes, and we can do the uh, do more about the uh, agent collaborations. Like so, we can we can make them work together for the same goals. Or the they can do they can perform the non uh collaborative things. Like so, do some uh debate and uh, do some the uh, adversarial games so kind of things. And then it can interact interact or the uh, communicate with the humans, like the so keep human in the loop scenes, and it can update, uh, like the human gives some knowledge or the wisdom to the models, to the agent, and the agent use it to update, uh, update itself and makes a better uh, decisions. And uh, so, so, so I gave the just a rough, a uh, rough of the bird view about the agent and what can, what we can do and what we can design for the agent. And then uh, I'd like to highlight some things. Uh, uh, highlight the significant gap between the large language model agent and the recommendation systems. So the, as we all know, the large LLM, our LLM at its core is a do the language modeling. Uh, on the uh, based on the rich word text based uh, sources, and uh, for the uh, traditional recommender systems, it just uh, focus on the user behavior sequence or the user behavior uh, modelings, and uh, it learns something, try to get the user behavior knowledge, and uh, from the sparse user item interactions or the item sequence, and uh, uh, about the modeling part, the LM, LLM. Uh, performs uh, uh, work with a chunk of text, like the 10,000 level things. Uh, but for the recommendation si re recommenders, uh, it, it, it usually uh, deals with uh, like the millions of the billions of item things or the uh, information things. And uh, so as we, all, uh, as we can see, so obviously the LLM is uh, a general, it's more general than the large, uh, than the recommender system. That's the only focus on the collaborative signals or the user behavior knowledge things. And uh, uh, LLM has the uh, open, uh, I think it's a uh, word knowledge things. And uh, uh, but for the uh, recommender system, it, uh, it lacks uh, cross domain uh, adaptions abilities, and uh, uh, and it uh, uh, for uh, and the recommender system also struggles with the uh, code star problem since. So how to how to bridge or close this gap is the, what we think, and uh, uh, let's focus. Let's uh, dive into the recommender systems, and uh, it just a user uh, links. Uh, it's uh, just a connection between the user and the recommender knowledge. And the recommendation system is observes uh, what user did and what user do as uh, just a user behavior, and then distills some uh, uh, recommendation specific knowledge, and then use such knowledge to vote the right uh, to vote the right items and uh, to uh, fit the user's information need. And uh, so there is uh, two critical. Uh, components in the recommendation system. The first thing is the understanding the user behaviors and the preference. And the second thing is the, uh, to get the recommender specific knowledge. And uh, for the agent part, in the, uh, we need to align the recommend recommendation space with the language space. And the two things we need to do, the first is the user behavior alignment with the language. And the second thing is the recommendation, your recommend, recommendation knowledge alignment. So uh, towards these two, uh, two research lines and uh, the different, uh, different questions we need to answer. The first is the can, uh, can an LM a powered agent faithfully simulate users? All the, Get the visible user behavior, and the second question is: uh, Can an LM powered agent uh, be a bad recommender with the recommendation specific knowledge? The first question is: uh, Can LLM agent as users? And the second question is: Can LM agent do be the recommender? So let's. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry for waiting, and the PowerPoint uh, doesn't work. Uh, so I just uh, convert it into the PDF things, and uh, uh, so uh, 
let's answer the first questions. Uh, can the agent faithfully simulate users? And like, I'd like to share our two works. And the first thing is uh, the agent for rank. And uh, we just uh, uh, we just uh, crack, uh, create the, the one one thousand uh, agent uh, generate agent. It's the initials with the real data from the various data set, like the movie lens or movie lens or the last FM. And uh, it uh, we just uh, put the demographic information into the chat GPT and it gets the rich uh, profile of users and then uh, make uh, use the users use the uh, such uh, augmented profiles uh, as the user profile here agent profile and then for the item things and uh, we use the stuff uh, we just uh, use uh, some uh, statistic uh, information and uh, then to generate some uh, memory uh, summaries and uh, for the uh, memory uh, uh, to faithfully simulate users and uh, here we uh, here we carefully design the two part the two components uh, the first one is the memory things and the second is the action space and uh, it makes the agents to recall the past interest of uh, users, uh, real users, and the plan the future actions uh, for the user agent, like the watch the movies or read or evaluate exist the system and uh, do some interviews. And uh, uh, with the uh, memory and the action modules, uh, such agents can interact with the recommender uh, environment, environment. Uh, like the MF or the multi-AE or the like TCN, and in the page by page manners and the pre improve some uh, and uh, various uh, actions here. And uh, I'd like to show some uh, experiments uh, results. Uh, sorry for this uh, format, and it's just a PDF has uh, no uh, animations. And uh, we have some key observations. Agents are uh, is able. Uh, Agent is able to preserve the user's social attributes and the preference. And uh, for example, so we can copy and the uh, uh, we can uh, we can achieve the similar distribution of the user ratings and the uh, user social traits like the age, gender, or the occupation things. And uh, uh, then uh, uh, one more uh, interesting thing is that we can uh, using the liking to uh, uh, to uh, to do the causal discovery things and to get some causal relationships between the uh, uh, some variables like movie qualities, movie ratings, movie popularity, and the exposure rate and the uh, and the view numbers and the causal relationship. The causal graph is uh, as shown in these figures. And then uh, using such such things, we can do some the all we can offer a simulate simulation platforms to do the A/B test and the fine tune the recommender models. Uh, so some so one take home uh, take home message is the uh, LM powered agents are able to generate faithful uh, user uh, behaviors. And the second thing is that the second work is the Eugene and the uh. Just the uh, the last work agent for rank is just the, do the large language model uh, inference and the, no uh, no fine tune or the no retrieval or no uh, retrain and the Eugene is the to uh, we retrieves we use the user behavior uh, interaction data and to fine tune the GPT uh, three point five turbo and add the warm up. And then the agent can uh, can select their interesting items among the candidate set. So the agent can uh, agent have some potentials to, to replace the discriminative learning with generative learning paradigms for user modeling the recommendation. And uh, we conduct ex extensive experiments on the three data sets, real data sets, and for the different domains like the movie, uh, Amazon book, and the games, Amazon games. And uh, we also have some uh, interesting uh, findings. The agents are e is able to provide the efficient, uh, effective behaviors, and especially in the in the scenarios with sparse data. And we can see the we we can see the uh, significant improvements in the sparse sparse groups. And uh, in this work, take home message is the behavior generated uh, by the. Uh, by the agents can benefit the recommenders. 
And uh, this work, the third work is HCF. I think this work is done by the USTC, uh, sorry, the uh, US, uh, U UCSD and the uh, RMU, Renmin University. And uh, uh, in the, it uh, simulates, it used the uh, LM agent to simulate users and uh, items and especially their interactions. And uh, for example, here is the user agent uh, it, it equips the user agent with the two memories. One is the short-term memory, and the uh, the second is the long-term memories. And for the item agent, it's just a short-term memories. And then it it assumes that uh, uh, to mimic the uh, gradient-based optimization of the recommender system, it uses the parameter-free text-based uh, collaborative opt optimization. For example, uh, at the initial step, there is no interaction between the user and item agent. Then the next, state, next step uh, lets the agent to uh, automatically interact with user agent, uh, automatically uh, interact with the item agent. Then it will uh, create some uh, interactions, either uh, unseen or the wrong uh, in the ground choose. And then when uh, once observe once observing when wrongly uh, when wrong interactions between the user and the item agent and uh, and to uh, this agent agent stay up is to uh, update the uh, wrong in, uh, 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 the wrong interaction to the correct things and updates the memory uh, in the item uh, agent and the user agent and uh, the uh, for the uh, from the uh, ex experimental results, uh, we have some uh, key observations. And the first one is the agent is able to simulate the user item interactions, not just the user user behaviors or the item things. So the uh, take home message is the agent can faithfully simulate simulate user item interactions. And uh, let's summarize the first uh, part is the to answer the first questions, can uh, LM agent feasibly simulate users? The answer is yes. And uh, there is a lot of things, a lot of works and like agent for rank, Eugene, agent CF and the rank agent uh, proposed, uh, proposed by Professor Chen Xu. And then let's, let's, uh, let's see the second questions. Can LM powered agent be a better recommender uh, with the recommendation spe uh, specific knowledge? I'd like to share the, our recent work to, to a rank. It's a work done by USTC and the, uh, it's a joint work uh, done by USTC and the Professor Martin. And uh, uh, here is the, we use the LM to understand the current uh, context and the preference of users and uh, then apply the attributes oriented tools to find the suitable items. Uh, here, we, uh, here we decide the two stage. The first one is just learning the preference of user, users and uh, to let the, use, let the agent to make the decision by itself. And then the second part is the exploration of the items. It's a use the, it's a let the agent to choose the uh, proper uh, tools as a, here is attributes oriented tools like the rank tools and the uh, recommenders, recommendation tools to explore the wide range of the items since. So this is uh, over. Uh, this is uh, overall framework over our tool rank. It's the uh, user profiles uh, to give them the RIM, and uh, it uh, retrieves uh, uh, retrieve some the uh, past uh, past actions, and uh, then uh, choice the uh, then and, and then choose the, select the uh, proper the attributes oriented tools like the uh, rank tools and the retrieval tools. And then to uh, use the future and the past uh, actions to update this memory scenes. And uh, here, our, uh, here are our observations uh, benefiting from the rank tools and the retrieval tools. Uh, to rank is, uh, is uh, good at the LM uh, movie lens when mainly at the Amazon book data sets and uh, compared to other baselines. And it demonstrates that it can, can better align with the user's preference within the rich information things. And then, the, but uh, in some data set like the yacht, uh, and the, it's about a local business business data set, uh, to, uh, to rank so the sub performance 
uh, compared to the baseline, compared to the uh, benchmark since I think the these tables as uh, the 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 improvements is not that good. Uh, so the take home message is the agent can using the external uh, tools like the uh, recommender systems or the re-rank uh, re -rank models and to enhance the recommendation results. And the second work is the interact agent. I think that this work is done by the USTC MSL, MSRA and uh, it's the sets the LM as the controller uh, and then the two tools uh, when and how to use the tools. The tools is the recommendation modules, uh, small recommendation system things. And it can create the versatile and interactive, interactive recommendation system. And uh, it enables uh, traditional recommendation systems such as uh, such uh, ID-based uh, IMF models and to become the interactive system with the natural language interface. And the third part, third work is the rec might. Uh, it's the similar, uh, similar to the uh, similar to the uh, tool rank and the uh, re, uh, the uh, the previous work. And the, at the each uh, planning step, the agent self uh, inspired to consider all previous explored paths for the next for the next planning, both the generating uh, alternative thoughts and the backtracking things. And the, I think the last work is the RH. It's the, uh, like, like the bridge or the assistance between the recommend, recommender and the uh, large language models. Uh, and it's uh, e and, uh, e equipped with the uh, learn act create loop. And uh, it can uh, collaborate with the act and uh, create agent in an uh, in, 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 uh, iterative process and grabs the user's personalities and the uh, once uh, receiving the user feedbacks and the learn agent extracts an initial personality as the candidate and the act agent use uh, such a, such candidates as the input to predict the user's actual actions and then uh, the create uh, agent uh, then uh, evaluation the accuracies and if in correct learn agent refine the candidates personalities. And uh, this work is the Mac rack is the to uh, use the multi agent scenes and with the different roles work together and to uh, tackle the, a specific recommendation system like the interpreters, the searchers, user and analytics and the item analytics and the reflector, and the different modules and with the different rules. And uh, this is a rack for, uh, rack for agent verse and uh, it's uh, just uh, uh, treating the uh, agents in uh, agent platforms as the items in the recommend recommender uh, system. And the agent recommendation system is employed to recommend personalized agent items for each users. It's just like the multiverse things. And uh, to summarize, uh, to to summarize, and uh, to answer the uh, the second question is: Can uh, agents be a better recommender with the recommender uh, specific knowledge? The answer is yes. And there is uh, a lot of efforts, like the two uh, two rank uh, interact agents, rank might, RH, Mac, Mac rank, and uh, rank for agent verse. And uh, let's uh, take the the break and uh, welcome uh, back in the, in the 14 minutes. Okay, uh, thank you. If you have any questions, uh, if, uh, if you don't have questions, we can have a short cup break. Any question about the first three talks? Okay, I think we can have some more discussion during the cup break. Thank you. We'll come back a few minutes later. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our uh, last section includes the background of uh, our main agent uh, simulation and the two talk, uh, uh, second talk and third talk about the online behavior simulation with our main agents. So our uh, Second half, uh, we all uh, go to social and economic simulation and the city system simulation with LM agents. So the first uh, part is social and economic simulation uh, with LM agents presented by me. 
Okay. Uh, I will introduce this part uh, through three uh, aspects. The first is social simulation system, and then that three, and our two uh, another two works about the attitude simulation and uh, emotion simulation in the system. Okay, this is a, a overall framework of a recent release as three uh, system uh, last year. Uh, it is about using the real world uh, uh, social network data to build such a, a simulation environment. And then we uh, build a same social network structure in the real world data and use LLM empower agent to simulate each individual. And for the simulation, we focus on the Simulation uh, includes the internal stage, includes the emotion, attitude, and the other uh, states. And we use prompting tuning, prompt tuning, uh, fine tuning strategies to ensure that each agent uh, is close to a real human and ensure its personalization ability. And uh, given the social event, and the, each individual uh, is expected to generate their behaviors including like behavior, uh, forward behavior, common behavior, and general behavior. The general behavior here is means to post, to, to post uh, some tests. Yeah, create a new post on the social network. And the other individuals simulated by the LM agents can forward the post. So the generation and post behaviors forms the propagation among the social network. And for the each agent, uh, the memory, uh, designed for the agent can store the real time input, such as a new post from his friends or the recommended system. So uh, this is a home of, uh, structure. And uh, uh, we first introduce some uh, basic uh, techniques in the system. After we crowd the real world social network data from the uh, the, the top uh, social media platforms, uh, we first to uh, predict the missing values on the user demographics, uh, including the uh, their uh, age, the gender, and occupation, and uh, other uh, fields or attributes. Uh, here we use the public textual data set with labels and uh, use the user with known demographics to predict the and to infer the missing values in this crowd data sets. Okay, and uh, for the agent-based simulation, we uh, for the for each agent, uh, we keep its demographic graphics and the memory as a personalization, and uh, also uh, also maintain the external environment, including the context and the new information. The new information means the new post or new message received by the individual agent from the agent from the other agents from his or her friends and the recommended system. And uh, for the agent, we uh, designed the memory update mechanism, a memory core and the reflection mechanism, and uh, then the, make the agent to reason and take actions. Uh, so uh, it's a uh, illustration, illustration of a system and to ensure the agent to think and take action like a human based on the memory and context information and reason. Okay, uh, and we also built a system uh, and the system is a picture, it's a screenshot of the system and it maintains a social network and each each uh, point, each point, each dot in the in the in the screenshot uh, represents a real world user and we simulate his or her historical emotional or attitude uh, state and uh, we can chat with the the individual to uh, to for example to ask, ask him or her for some information and to do some queries and the agent can respond to the user of the platform. And we also take two very representative uh, example to test whether the system can do good simulation. The first is the attitude or stance simulation about a nuclear need energy, uh, because uh, we know that Japan has a nuclear waste water release event. So it's a kind of important uh, event it can attract a lot of users to post uh, new messages and forward messages. And second is the emotional simulation about the gender discrimination. As we know, there's, there's a, a bad event in China, and we simulate how the individuals in the system react to this event through the information propagation. Okay, uh, first we do some individual level simulation ability. As I mentioned, my my uh, first talk uh, in the about the evaluation of the simulation, 
The first is individual level simulation evaluation. We want to ensure that each individual can well reproduce the user behavior. So this uh, is named the individual level simulation, and we uh, show the performance and find that the LLM agent can well predict the user's emotion, attitude, and behavior. The emotion includes calm, moderate, intense, and attitude includes support or not, and behavior includes forward behavior and post behavior. <laughs> also, we tested the uh, the quality of the generated content by the individual agents. We also have the population level simulation uh, performance evaluation to test whether the, the information propagation has the same trend with the real world data. So in the left picture, we show the real, the comparison between real uh, propagation and the simulated propagation. Of course, the, 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 the day and simulation steps is, is, not, is not the same, right? But we observe the same trend that we want to observe. For the emotion propagation, we also observe a very interesting uh, response to, uh, between two uh, two figures first is real and the second is the simulation and we can see if, if the news is slowly propagated to a larger community there will be the second peak so we uh, will reproduce the second peak during the propagation uh, in conclusion our simulation can well predict the trend in uh, this case and for the another case of uh, nuclear energy uh, we also observe the information propagation trend. So we have a similar trend and also we observe the attitude propagation. We can see the public attitude tends to be normal after the period. So when the news first comes to the, to the users, users may have a shock on their emotional. So they show a, 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 show a change. But after a, a long period, the, the public attitude tends to be normal. So. Uh, this is another case to show that our simulation can well predict the trend. So this is population level simulation. We do not aim to, uh, we don't aim to simulate very accurately, but we want to observe the same or similar trend. That's what we want to observe. Uh, and uh, this is a lot of show website of this paper in the uh, printed uh, print, print, uh, version. You can scan the QR code. If you're interested on the details, uh, including the experience and the technical details of this work. Okay, so this uh, is a, a introduction of our uh, S3 system. And uh, uh, furthermore, I want to introduce more about the simulation on the specific aspects, including the attitude or known as sense and emotion. Okay, uh, so uh, actually, LM agents uh, the, is not so, it's probably missing on sense detection that it, it has, has shown some basic ability to, to Think like a real human. Uh, okay, you you are uh, you favor in specific, uh, or you are not in favor in. So it is probably missing. But directly using the LM agents to simulate or detect the stance or predict the stance may help poor performance. Uh, so uh, we, we compare the small models with the the larger uh, larger longer model. In two benchmark data sets, and we found that the the SOTA uh, models are not the LM model. So, uh, and we also follow the the structure security follow the from design, and found that the sense detection and simulation is still very difficult for LM agent. So we want to try to explain why uh, it is challenging and what we need to resolve to simulate the sense uh, very accurately. So uh, we think there are two challenges. First, the, the sense detection or simulation demands multi-aspect knowledge. Uh, for example, in this uh, example of uh, the Donald Trump case, uh, it shows the first challenge. And the second challenge is that the sense detection and simulation requires a very advanced reasoning. The reasoning uh, procedure is very complex. If you directly judge the or simulate the stance, it is not accurate. So we need to do some more specific and you know, proper design for our agent to better detect and predict and simulate the, the, the stance. And we propose a multi-agent framework. Uh, it's, it's a named analyst, debater, and a summarizer framework. And for addressing the first challenge, that the stress detection demands multi-aspect knowledge. We use the analyst uh, agent to analyze the text from various perspectives. 
And for the second challenge that the sense detection simulation requires that once the reasoning, we deploy multi-agent debaters to debate, debate for each potential stance category. And finally, uh, another agent, we call it summarizer, to get conclusion from debate to debate and to, to determine the final result that the user is uh, in favor in the, uh, the thing or not. Okay, this is the open framework based on the multi-agent design. Okay, well, we don't show the... Okay, so uh, for the multi-dimensional text analysis stage, the input is the text with the stance, and the output is the individual analysis of the text by three aspects. The linguistic expert, the domain specialized, and the social media material. And for the linguistic expert, it deserves the text from a linguist standpoint, focused on grammar, structure, tense, and inflection, uh, lexical choices. And for domain specialist, it explains domain uh, relevant knowledge and focused on characters, events, organizations, parties, and religions. And for sort of social media, it develops into the analysis of the social media expression, focusing on hashtags, internet slang, and algorithms and emotional tone. So these are different uh, dimensions. And for a reasoning enhanced debating stage, the agent uh, are advocates for each possible stance. So the input is a text with a span, a stance, and the analysis of the text by the linguist expert to the domain specialized in another aspect in the last stage. And output is the debate from each agent for a sense they support, including the evidence it chooses and its logic chain. And for the final conclusion stage, the, the agent, uh, its input is a text with the embedding states, uh, arguments from each agent in the debate, debate space, including the, the evidence and the logical reasoning during the debating stage. And output is the final, we want uh, the stance we want to predict, predict and simulate. So this is the details of the uh, of the of our three agent framework. And the, here we show the the performance on the uh, benchmark uh, evaluation metrics. We found that the, our methods achieve the current sort of performance in the most scenarios without the need of additional training. And we further uh, verify the effectiveness in our methods. The move, removal of any expert agent in our mechanism uh, results in a certain degree of performance uh, de degrade. And the removal of both stages uh, leads to significant performance drop. So it shows the each design in our methods is very essential. And uh, it shows that our methods uh, has a high explorability. Yeah, we want to answer uh, the question that can the uh, COLAB framework provide a reasonable explanations for its decisions. And we can see that uh, the cases show that the COLAB can provide a reasonable and high quality explanations for its uh, decisions. We also do some quantitative uh, analysis and evaluation on the explanation results. We use the generated explanation to help GPT 3.5 to identify stands better. It means if we, we just use the explanations generated by our agents and put it in the, in the context uh, for the GPT 3.5 agent, and it shows that the performance improves, uh, it improves significantly. So it means that the, the explanations for the stance uh, prediction in the decision uh, in the decision is reasonable and uh, high in high quality. Uh, we further uh, evaluate whether the methods can perform well on other measurement tasks because we only use stance as one important case. There are also um, are also many other important tasks. Uh, we use it in senti uh, sentiment analysis and in position prediction, uh, in, which are both uh, which are very important in social simulation. And the first is about to determine the sentiment expressed in the task. The second is about determining whether one party in a conversation will be persuaded after discussion. And then our method achieves uh, the or uh, surpasses the SOTA uh, performance in both tasks without a require ad any additional training. And our method demonstrates strong facility and can be applied to a range of measurement tasks and simulation tasks in social networks. 
uh, you can consider as a kind of uh, general reference work and easy to use in different environments, different simulation tasks. Okay, this work is uh, established by, uh, this is ICWCM, and it is selected as a spotlight light paper. Uh, spotlight, uh, spotlight means it, it uh, ranks top 4% uh, among all the sub-emissions. Okay, so so the this work is about uh, the the stance and attitude of simulation, and uh, further we want to do a very interesting uh, simulation it's about emotion. How to ensure the user has uh, in the simulation as in in uh, with the simulated age with the agent simulation can have the uh, similar emotional pattern with the real human. Uh, we focus on a very important task. Uh, we name it a vulnerable user detection. Uh, it aims to access the user's emotional variability based on text posts on social media. As I introduced in the S3 system, we use the historic posts of the social media to represent the user. Yeah, user uh, the simulated user, the simulated agent is expected to generate and uh, the social media content uh, posts. So the posts is the very important data here. And uh, we want to judge whether the user is vulnerable or not to predict his or her future emotional state. If it is, if the users uh, or the agent uh, belongs to the vulnerable one, uh, he or she may will may be get depressed uh, after some uh, uh, post exposure. Uh, so uh, first. The different individual exhibit different patterns of emotional changes, and the threshold of events that cause emotional changes varies. And the last challenge is identify emotional variability is being beneficial for accurately predict the individual emotional changes during the simulation. So, uh, in the S three system, the agent is required to okay to respond to the new events. So, new events can be considered as a kind of intervention. We want to simulate the user's response on the emotional uh, aspect uh, after the event. So, so this is what uh, our work focuses on. Okay, so uh, for the simulation, emotional vulnerability simulation with OM, uh, we uh, do it by uh, uh, LM agent, but uh, we know the existing works uh, is is uh, is a challenging to for for this problem, including, you know, to sorry sorry for the grammar for, for the format error. Uh, it first relies on the professional psychology knowledge because for uh, traditional model it, it is very challenging to integrate those knowledge and advice from a psychologist. The it means the domain knowledge of the psychology cannot be used in, in the traditional models. Yeah, the mode, the mode, it means modeling emotions or patterns of emotional change cannot be entirely data driven. It should rely on professional knowledge from psychology domain. And it is also very necessary to ensure high accuracy and high explainability. Uh, while LM classifiers as naturally generated explanations for decisions, their accuracy is lower by the domain specific models. It means that LM and all, all, all LM agents can, okay, can write a sentence to, address, to explain but the performance is not stable and good. So the traditional classifiers with good data trained have high accuracy, but poor explainability. So these are two main challenges for this problem. Uh, so uh, for uh, to for addressing the first challenge that the task relies on expertise in this area and the specific area of psychology, we uh, we using uh, the the professional psychology skills. The skills is okay. Is, Developed by those psychologists, they have very good domain knowledge. They they are no, they know real human very well, well. So we use the skills by uh, created by them, and uh, then the emotional vulnerable text can be applied to users with the LM agent simulation. And we also incorporated the concept of the mood course, uh, which which is a uh, which is a concept from psychology, and the LM is used to explicitly model the user's emotional history. So you say this is the first. Uh, Challenge and how, how we first address the first challenge. For the second challenge is that the task needs to ensure high accuracy and high explainability. Uh, we uh, do a, a you know a classification with well-trained traditional classifiers to improve accuracy. So we integrate small models with large models 
be use LM to produce explanations based on the small model uh, classifiers. Uh, it can introduce both it, uh, arguments and the reasoning, enhancing the explainability. So the generation of the explanation is still done by the large language model. There's a cooperation between the traditional classifiers and the LM agents for the, for the uh, achieving higher accuracy and also uh, explainability. So this is a whole, uh, framework I just uh, uh, present. Okay, so uh, the method detail includes the diagnostic uh, criteria feature extraction. It is based on the user's historical posts and uh, uh, use uh, the annotations uh, symptoms of the depression with LM to generate a depression uh, symptom feature. And for mood cross representation construction, we also use the user, user's historical post. And we use mood cross analysis with LM agents to generate the mood cross representation. As I mentioned before, mood cross is a concept from psychology. It's defined as a temporal pattern and progression of emotion states, which is very critical for psychologists to detect the depression. And uh, it's uh, that delineates the onset duration and the recurrence of mood episodes, providing insights to the, the, the uh, disorder's nature and the trajectory. It's a, it's a combination from a domain knowledge and LM. And for the post history representation construction, uh, we also use the uh, uh, user historical post and use a textual embedding model. And we finally got a, get a representation. It can model the user's entire post history. And for prediction and explanation stage, we consider both, uh, we consider, consider depression symptom, mood course, and host history, and classify with uh, traditional model and explain with the LM. Finally, we get the, both the results of the classification and the explanation. And here shows the performance on the, uh, compared with different uh, competitive methods. So we shows that our method outperforms the, all the current state of art performance on all metrics. And uh, due to the correlation of the knowledge, our method still uh, maintains very good performance on those extremely imbalanced data sets because we are not purely data driven. And uh, with uh, further research shows the ablation study and uh, high performance study. And for MX study, we shows that Every module in our approach contributes to performance gain. So if we remove any of them, we can observe a performance drop. And have for the hyperparameter study, uh, we observe uh, okay the parameters k and m determines the proportion of post. Uh, we perform the with high performance LM. The trend of k and m indicates that under our uh, filtering mechanism, pro uh, processing with about twenty percent of case with LM, they are the best or near best for results because we integrate the common sense and the domain knowledge. And finally, our methods conserves computational uh, resources. Okay, we further uh, to uh, present a, a very interesting insights uh, in this work is that our methods can provide high quality explanations for uh, a decision. It can it can uh, uh, can be considered kind of uh, 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 report of the user's emotional state. The explanations include the psychological scale annotational results and the high emotional sensitivity text extraction results and the mood cross depression and the decision explanation. So these four parts, uh, four parts, uh, all, all of these four parts include uh, very good explanations. And our methods provide high quality explanations for its judgments from um, these, these multiple perspectives and with very good evidence. So this show this work is about to simulate the emotion, especially for the vulnerable users in the social simulation system. And this is a preprint pre 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 paper we released uh, uh, this year. And this is archive link for this paper. Okay, so I have introduced uh, three uh, sub works uh, supporting our uh, social simulation system, including the uh, S3 system and the stand simulation with the LM agents and uh, recent uh, pre-print paper for emotional simulation with the LM agents. And, uh, and here I want to, uh, okay, goes to another domain uh, on the econ economics. Uh, as uh, introduced in the first uh, part of the background of LM agent-based simulation, I have uh, introduced that uh, 
the simulation of, especially for the agent-based simulation, is very important in the uh, economic domain. Okay, for the economic, especially for macroeconomic simulator, uh, there are two kinds of methods. The first uh, kind of method is using some statistic model. The statistic model uses some distribution to describe the user's behavior. For example, you, uh, to describe uh, the, the income, okay, income distribution of a, of a group of users. And the second uh, uh, approach is, is very popular it, and famous. It is known as DSG, Dynamic Stochastic General Equilibrium. Uh, these methods try to solve some equations to th this de uh, these equations describe the economic system uh, use some variables okay some variables and the equations describe how the variables affect each other and the, the dfg methods try to solve uh, equilibrium point and the, the point uh, solved point uh, represents the economic status of the current system uh, but uh, this method uh, requires the uh, assumption of a perfect world because the real world is not uh, is is not the world is the real world is not perfect perfect right the users make a make choice very uh, due to very complex bias or they are not so original so the the system is not so perfect so these methods are not good enough but uh, these methods. Uh, tell us that we maybe we should to use agent-based simulation. We do good uh, mechanism, design good mechanism for each individual on the economic system. And if we want to, uh, to have the emergence of some macroeconomic phenomenon, uh, this is uh, a basic concept of agent-based modeling in the economic research. And uh, also there, is a, some, there are some baselines to use agent-based modeling in the economic system. Uh, we can see a uh, very representative uh, baseline named the LEN. Uh, in this simulation, the, the individuals including includes the worker and the firm. Okay, the, the individual can work at a firm. The firm can hire different workers and pay them some different income, okay, Sal different salaries. And uh, the the user and the individual in the system can further consume consume the products generated by the, the firms. So the, the here, the actions of the individual includes working, okay, to, to get some salaries and consume to spend the money to obtain products. And for firm, it's uh, actions includes hire workers and produce products. So the, this system, aims to simulate how the individual takes these actions and how the firm takes actions. And I want to observe some very re representative phenomenon from real world data, such as the curve of the unemployment and the curve of the firm scale and the Philip curve and the monetary policy. So, okay, we have real world data of the, these trends, these curves, and we want to use a simulation system to reproduce this, this trend, okay. Uh, but uh, this mess these methods, it's not so good. I will show you this later. Okay. And another kind of simulation is to use the RL agent. Okay, R agent to, to simulate. Because in the then, then LEN approach, they do very simple uh, rule-based mechanism for each individual. And for the for the RL policy uh, based approach, it maximizes the average wealth and the so society equity. It means that each uh, we should have to, we can have uh, users with too low uh, salary. So it's about to maximize the average wealth and the society equity. And it uh, deploys such a uh, framework and the individual, for the individual, they can, okay, okay, they can spend money and they can work and gain, gain salary. And uh, for the government, it can design different tax policy. Okay, they can take more tax from the richer individuals. Mm -hmm. And for the uh, uh, firm for the for the, they still had the same similar simulation. Okay, so this system take the social welfare as the RL optimization goals to achieve op optimal tax policy. So this work focuses more on the decision of the government. It kind of uh, the help is a tool to help the 
government to, to design different tax policy. Okay, but I want to summarize the shortcomings of using ABM, agent-based modeling economic system. Uh, we think uh, they have uh, shortcomings in uh, perception and reflection and decision. The perception means it refers to that the existing methods is very hard to model the heterogeneity individual's perception because it always assumes a uniform or same distribution for all the users. They can reflect the different rationality or irrationality or decision-making bias on different users. The users always do the same decision. Yeah, it's lost the heterogeneous property of the of the okay users. And the second is a reflection. The these users in the existing works cannot dynamically respond to the market environment changes. When the environment changes, okay, to for example, there are some changes not in training data or very strange. The agent in his in existing methods cannot do good reflection. They cannot uh, identify the okay the trend of the whole economic system. And the last is the decision. The existing methods always do some simple assumption that a user's decision is based on specific factors. For example, to 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 spend more or spend less, to work more, work less. They assume very simple and limited factors for the decision making to take the final actions. So these methods, existing methods are not good at this, this ones, but these ones are very important. And the VBR shows that LM agents is good at this, 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 this aspects. The first is the perception. Uh, the, the LM agents is able to uh, take the context and the common sense, especially common sense, uh, well, for, for the simulation. And it can good it, it, it is good to it good at uh, identifying the market dynamics, including the inflation trend, unemployment trend, and the decision making by the LM agents is very complex. It's very close to real human. You will consider multi phase factors, including the income, tax, price, and so, so on, and many other factors to take their actions. So LM agent has human like behavior characteristics from these three aspects. So we define a, a simulation framework here. Uh, first is uh, uh, the simulation framework uh, in, uh, including four primary uh, components, labor, consumption, financial markets, and the government taxation. And it, we simulated the two most critical decisions uh, individual can make in a real life, work and the consumption, okay, work. Game, uh, make your money uh, accumulated and the consumption, uh, okay, spend your money for the, each individual. And these uh, actions, which can subsequent, uh, subsequently influence the, uh, the avenues uh, of the government, the government can, okay, can uh, offer the, okay, the welfare to the, each individual. The individual can get money from the government. Mm -hmm. So this is the government uh, uh, one action. And uh, further, the, the individual's actions can impact the dynamics of the labor markets and the consumption markets. Okay, this is very easy to understand. If all the users spend money, want to buy the products, okay, the products price will increase. So it's a, okay, it's a basic economic uh, knowledge. And the, there are other, uh, uh, role in this system is is bank. The bank uh, can adjust their interest rates. Okay, if the interest rate is very high, okay, the individuals uh, is more like to okay to save the money in the in the bank. Okay, this is also a, a typical trend in the economic system, the simulation. So the banks will adjust their the interest rate based on the market inflation or deflation. So. We have four, part, four, four parties, right? Four components, labor, consumption, financial markets, and government taxation. Okay, so, so this is the six uh, simulation framework. And uh, individual, uh, just, uh, as just uh, mentioned, individuals make decisions of working and produce goods uh, for consumption in the market. And uh, the government uh, uh, do the 
taxation policy and also the redistribution policy to make the society fair. Okay, the goods, uh, okay, the goods production and the consumption have impact on individual wages and the goods prices. And the market conditions have impact on the interest rates set by, set by the bank. Okay, and also the individual savings. So we do the, uh, after we design such an environment and framework, uh, we first design the agent in the economic system. Uh, okay, the first is a heterogeneous individual's perception of the real world economics. Uh, it uh, includes two, uh, two critical uh, parts. First uh, is agent profile, it includes age, job, wage, and also uh, market distribution including current uh, unemployment state, the shortage of goods. So the LM agents to uh, aims to, if it, I expected to, uh, to sense the market and uh, to obtain the heterogeneous individual's perception. Now this example shows that the risks from unemployment last month increased the user's willingness to work this month. Okay. In the previous month, if you had became on payroll per month and had, had no income, now you're invited to work at blah, blah, blah. So this is the kind of prompting for noticing the agent, the current status of the uh, recent months. And uh, furthermore, the agent uh, is expected to reflect on the past economics. Uh, it includes profile, tax policy, and the economic environment, and also the working and the consumption decisions. And for the agent, it uh, uh, further do reflections on the dynamics in labor consumption and the financial markets. Uh, it means that the agent is expected to summarize the, the recent uh, dynamics of the system. Uh, for example, in this example, given the previous quarter's economic environment, reflect on labor consumption and the financial markets as well as the dynamics, which conclusions have you drawn? So this conclusion is drawn by the agent itself. It's very close to the, okay, it's very close to the real human, right? For a real human to do some actions on the economic system, he or she will reflect on the information he or she received and try to draw some important conclusions about the current economic system. And uh, finally, when taking the decision, okay, uh, the agent is expected to consider the impact of multi-based economic factors, including the okay income, tax retribution, interest rate, and good price. And if I find to uh, to generate that decision, includes the working and consumption propensity. So the example shows that with the, all these factors in play and considering aspects like your living cost, any future aspirations and the broader economic trends. How is your willingness to work this month? Furthermore, how would you plan your uh, expenditures on essential goods, keeping in mind goods price? So this example shows work and the consumption decisions that consider multi-phase economic factors. Is is a uh, is a, the generation for the further behaviors and actions, including working or consumption? Okay, this. Is the results in uh, in our experiments? Uh, we aim to observe the phenomenon from the population level, including inflation, unemployment rate, GDP, and GDP, GDP growth rate. And the, uh, the simulation emerges two types two types of uh, microeconomic phenomenon. It's more reasonable than the traditional agents. Here, the traditional agents, including the rule based agents, including land, cats, and the compostable. And uh, the RMS is uh, AI economics. So these are very competitive baselines. And we show that the macroeconomic indicators with smaller uh, fluctuations and a more reasonable numerical ranges generated by our LM empowered agents. Also, we observe the, the macroeconomic uh, uh, regularities is more consistent with the empirical facts from the real world. So we choose a Phillips curve and the Occam's law to very representative trend observed from real world data. So our methods uh, empowered by our based agents 
can better reproduce the real world uh, phenomenon uh, from the macroeconomic perspective. Uh, we further to uh, check the rationality of the agent decision uh, and uh, for the work decisions. Uh, recreation coefficients are used to study the impact of the monthly salary taxes and the financial uh, rebates. And for the, all the agents, paying less taxes and receiving more financial uh, rebates, increasing the willing, willingness to work. And for then 60% of the agents, uh, the increase in the monthly salary will increase the work uh, willingness. So this is analysis about the how the each individual make decisions according according to the you know according to the contextual information of the system. And uh, only uh, as I have just uh, mentioned, as our only our agent decision making gives the correct Phillips curve. Uh, it means the negative relation between the unemployment rate and the weak inflation. Okay, because our agent grasp the market environment, consumption reduction caused by economic downturn under high uh, unemployment rate. Okay, here here we ask about the reasons for the LMA agents on our system and they, in, in, they give the correct feedback as a real human. We also uh, conduct an intervention experiment. As we know, the COVID-19 is a very uh, external shock for the economic system. So you can consider as a kind of intervention, intervention uh, in the simulation stage. And uh, we use, uh, okay, the Real world data uh, in the in the uh, in the, our real in the real world uh, for a very long period before COVID nineteen after COVID nineteen and we use the prompt to okay to notice the agents okay uh, they are a COVID uh, 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 yeah and how about the users further re uh, response and how about the the changes of the of the whole system. And uh, we can see that the COVID-19 restriction in our system to bring the search in our environment, which is where uh, which is a, has the same trend uh, of the real world. So the agent, we can see the agent reflection includes how the uh, COVID-19 affect his decisions in work and consumption. But we also have a very short uh, video to show in uh, in a in a simulation in China, Beijing about how the agent driven the economic behaviors in this uh, small uh, district. They, in, uh, it's not small actually, uh, in, this, uh, in this area, the users can okay, choose to work on specific organizations and they, they can also spend money to buy products. And then we show the, how the agent reflects and how the, their memory updates during the simulation and how when some intervention of the taxi policy changes, and how they behave after the change, and, and it can well simulate the real human uh, data. Okay, this is a, a preprint pre 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 of all this work, and uh, we think this is a very early work that consider LM agents in economic simulation. Actually, uh, ec economic simulation is very important in existing uh, research of the economist, but uh, existing methods cannot achieve good performance. So agent-based modeling is not so attractive for traditional researcher on, on economics because those methods are not good performance. Uh, they are not good, good at assimilate. So I think if we introduce our agents in this area, maybe they will change the idea, change the, their mind that uh, our agent-based modeling is not, not so good because we have shown some early uh, evidence that our agents is very, has shown very interesting and insightful uh, performance in simulating the okay macro level uh, economic phenomenon. They can well reproduce Occam's law and Phillips curve, which is not able to be simulated in the existing methods. Okay, so this is a, uh, you can scan QR code to uh, access more details of this simulation work. Okay, so this is uh, my presentation on the social and economic system simulation. And uh, our next talk is, uh, 
Our next talk is from the Professor Feng Li Xu uh, to from the social and economy system to the city system. Let's welcome. Hi, hello everyone. Um, I'm Feng Li Xu, um, an uh, assistant professor from Tsinghua University. Um, thank, um, um, it's, it's my great pleasure to give the pre presentation today and thank you for staying with us. First, uh, please allow me to briefly review the history of agents in cities, okay? I believe the history can trace back at least for 60 years. One of the earliest agent-based models was believed as this Thomas Gillian's work about how to model the urban segregations, uh, which, which is a very important topic, uh, at least in, in US, right? So he proposed a quite simple um, agent-based model, like one individual would be Sorry, uh, I will re-share the screen. Okay, I think it works now. Okay, um, so he proposed, so the, the, the Nobel Prize winner, not Thomas Schilling proposed a very simple um, agent-based models. He doesn't have LLM. He, he, uh, he didn't have, even have, he didn't even use com computers. He only used coins and the graph papers to simulate the urban segregation. So each individual would decide to move if the surrounding neighbors, uh, the similar ratio of the, of the surrounding neighbor is below a threshold. So through this very simple agent-based model, he find that male preference could lead to the emergence of severe segregations at ag aggregate level. So I believe so that is the, key topic about the agent-based models in, 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 in cities. That's like how complex and the universal, the macro patterns can emerge from the in interaction of individual agents. So afterwards, there's a lot of agent-based models uh, used to trying to aim to explain the universal empirical laws in, 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 in cities. One of our previous work showed that um, the agent-based models for urban mobility can reproduce several important scaling laws in cities and also predict the fractal formologies of cities um, very accurately. So, um, so I believe, so if we, sum, we, 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 we can summarize these previous uh, works, we can find that they fo their focus is to um, use the micro agents as a proxies of some rules or mechanisms and examine whether they can explain um, some interested macro patterns through the agent-based simulations. But we all know that when the LLN came, the paradigm kind of changed radically. So one of the very influential work is last year, um, generative ag ag agents. I believe a lot of us are aware of these papers. So they leverage the common sense reasoning power of LLMs to simulate 25 agents in a virtual town. So some um, also called this paper as like the um, the Stanford AI town. So um, they are, this is the architecture of their agents. So mainly they have uh, five modules, the plan, perceive, reflect, act, and the re re retrieve. So they show that um, when, when organizing the LLM model, LLMs in this uh, agentic workflow, then it can be quite effective to, to simulate human-like societies. And uh, a brief summary is like that their re re retrieve is can, can be effective to find the relevant memories to augment the agent's behaviors uh, in a consistent way. And the reflect is to pre periodically to summarize the low level memories into the high level abstract source. And that they show that um, this, this kind of generative agents can simul simulate human-like activities such as planning a volatile parties and uh, produce more believable behaviors even than the even compared to the human co-workers. So let's take a, a step back. So ask ourselves, what is a LLM a, a, a agent? So I think it's a, it's a problem not very clearly answered yet, but one um, definition I like a lot is like the LLM agent can be considered as an agentic workflow of the LLMs. It's like we, we let the LLM to reason in a structured way, in a, almost like the cognitive 
architectures of humans, maybe. So there's one paper about the cognitive architectures for language models. So and they, they and also the Andrew Wu, a professor from Stanford University, thinks the four most important modules of LM agents are reflection, tool use, planning, and the multi-agent collaborations. And I also believe the LM, LM agents could be very important. So one of the recent perspective paper in na Nature Machine Intelligence arguing that the interacting agents could be very important uh, and a novel data sources. Uh, because um, as you know, it, as the, our model gets bigger and bigger, we kind of exhaust all the available uh, data from the web. So we are kind of in a token crisis or, or data crisis. We need to find, find a way to have novel data sources. So the reinforcement AI allow us to, uh, to, act, uh, to collect data through the in interaction with environments. But if we are simulating in a system with a lot of interacting age agents, then the possibility is a lot higher. We can have more uh, and much more, more and maybe higher quality data sets from this kind of agent-based simulations. So I believe so when the generative agent came, the, there is a paradigm shift in this agent-based model with, with, with research in cities. So the focus shift from the micro mechanisms to the macro pattern itself. And the, a lot of the key problem become like generating data and uh, um, having a learning environment uh, that can, that can use to train more, more models, better models. Well, despite of the great potentials, there are also a lot of challenges, I believe, in, de in designing city agents. Um, I, I identify three challenges here. So the first is how to interact with complex urban environments. There could be easily millions of points of interest in a city, which is the places with um, specific functions. So it, it is kind of impossible if you just ask LM to choose a place to interact with. So how to interact with urban complex urban environments. The second is the urban experience is multi-models. It's, it's, it's way beyond text. You have images, sorry. Um, you have images, you have a lot of other ex, uh, experience. So how to allow these LM agents with these multi-model capabilities. And the third, the last one is how to scale up. So if we, you really run a, a simulation of um, LLM, uh, multi-agent um, LLM systems, then you will know it's very expensive. So how we can scale up um, in a re reasonable way, that's also a very important problem. So first I will talk about uh, how to interact with the urban place. So I think it can be considered as like a, as, as, as equivalence of simulating uh, the mobility behavior in cities. Like the interact with urban places is equivalent, maybe equivalent to generating a realistic mobility behaviors, like how the indiv individual agent go to different places. So that has been a lot of work previously. There have been physics models use this stochastic process to model the, the, the mobility behavior. There's also a lot of deep learning methods, like the gun-based methods, the VAE-based methods, the diffusion-based methods. But I think all of these previous methods can be summarized under this fitting and the sample framework. That's, uh, we first trying to fit a model for the distributions of the, of the data with massive training data. So when, once we have this learned distribution, then we can sample a new data point from the distribution, which is considered as a generated data. But if we follow in this framework, then we inevitably need to have a, a, a huge data training data set if we want to fit a complex distribution functions, right? But I, I think when we have these LLM agents, then maybe we can rethink, rethink the, the scheme of generating behavior data. It, it's, it's totally possible. We can reframe the generation problem as a reasoning problem. We can use few shot role play capabilities of the LLM agents to understand how people behave. It's, it's not like an imitation game. It's, it's no longer imitation, every detail move behavior. It's to understand the, sorry, the, the slice is out of control. It's, it's to understand the, how they act in certain ways. So if we can, we can achieve that, then maybe we can simulate or generate the human behavior with far fewer training data. So, and to achieve that, I think we, we need to address several, several challenges. Um, it can be all summarized like how to you know, choose from 
millions of urban places. There's just too complex urban space. So the LM have limited context lens, and uh, they don't they are they can understand the geospatial data very uh, very good uh, very well. And uh, it's also very expensive if, if we want to put all the you know places into their choices. So how can we you know grounded the reasoning power of LLM in the context of uh, ur urban space? So in our one of our recent work, we uh, we, we try to propose this uh, a framework that used the theory of planned behavior, which is a theory of um, to make sense of human behavior, trying to um, and to. Uh, make LLM into a, 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 an agents that can simulate human behaviors. So we, so they have three factors or three elements of this framework, this series. One is the attitude, so, and, and the, so the second is the subjective norm, and the third is the perceived behavior con con control. So we, we think the at attitude can be simulated as the demographic profile of the agents, and the subjective norm is like the templates the templates of the intentions or the, or the templates of behavior is like what your usual behavior be or like what is the regular um, the regular time framework for a, for a for a human being with certain demographic profile that's the subjective norm right and the, the perceived behavior control can be some physical factors like how distant is that place is. like what is the road network do you have some um do you have some transportation means be, be, be between the two places? Then we believe, so the LLM is good at doing the first two part, two part. It's like the under, you know, making sense of the profile and they're trying to infer a template of the in, intentions. And the third part, trying uh, to model the physical factors can be you know, upload to some physical models, right? So that's why we propose to, to a, a two stage a framework to ground the LLM reasoning with a physical mo mobility models. Then we use the for the first part, the, the, the upper uh, half of the, the framework, we use the LLM few shot um, um, role play capabilities to learn from few shot ex ex examples to simulate an intention template of uh, individuals of certain profile. So when we get this intention templates, we can map that into the physical space with a physical uh, mobility model, like using a tool, like using a tool. So that's like two stage collaboration, collaboration framework. So for uh, for the first part, how to generate templates of mobility in, 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 in intentions, we, we we use this few shot role playing capabilities of LLM. So we a, a human annotated a few, just a few um, ex, ex, ex examples of the um, the daily routines and the, the motivation behind each individuals, and then we ask the LLM to generate it like a step by step, like the reasoning each intentions uh, um, sequence step by steps based on the current in intention and the current con context. And secondly, when we have this intention tem templates, we, we we let LLM to call and physical mobility model, the gravity models, to map the intention to a specific locations of certain type. Like if I want to go someplace to eat, we want to find a place for sport, then I will map to a physical space based on this prob probabilistic calculated by the gravity models. So we surprisingly find that, so this um, framework is quite simple, but it's very e effective. So it uh, improved all performance metrics um, by a lot, I mean, it improved compared when compared to the deep learning models, compared to the physics models, it improved all performance metrics by 44% on average. And the, the intentioned metric, like the thematic metric, is improved even more. It's about 62%. And I think the most important part is that the training data set was reduced from 10,000, 100,000 to only 200. So it's really like a few shot. Um, few shots behavior generations. And uh, we also show that by you know exploit by exploiting the combination of LLM and uh, physical models, we can re reduce the token cost to only six zero point six percent compared to the pure LLM generation ratios. And uh, it even generate better results compared to the pure LLM uh, models. So I think it's an effective way to you know, offload some parts of this behavior generation that's where the LM is not good at to these physical models to exploit the synergy between LMs and some physical models. And then we're also trying to um, evaluate the downstream 
app, uh, downstream applications uh, when we have this kind of generation models. We, we show that um, this generated data can be used to improve the mobility prediction task um, by a lot. So we have a preprint paper um, about this work. Uh, you can find, you can access it in from this uh, QR codes. We call that beyond imitation. It means we are not no, no longer the fitting and the sample generation schemes. It's a reasoning schemes. It's like mobility generation as reasoning. Okay, um, that's the first challenge we are trying to address. And the second part we explore is the multimodal urban experience. So there's one um, P PNAS paper from last year showing that it, the, the last, this paper is called the Urban Visual, Visual Intelligence, showing that, that the visual cue in urban space can be used to predict a lot of important urban events, like the events related to health, to crime, to a lot of uh, stuff, important uh, stuff uh, can be accurately predicted with the visual cues in urban space. So it's natural to ask, can LLM agents pick up those visual cues? So it's the, um, so right, so and the, um, there's been an interesting work from this year's Triple AI, showing that the, um, the LLM agents can be, you know, um, configured to allow to follow the language instructions to navigate with visual cues in street wheels. For example, here, he gives an ins instruction to asking the LLM agents to maybe um, when there is a blue bench on your left, then you, you should turn, turn around. When there is a, they give them these uh, instructions and the LLM can follow this, in, can compare these instructions with the street view images they are seeing in the streets and uh, follow them, okay? So the way they achieve it is to, propose, is to combine in the clip Clip is a model that aligns the um, images with some language cap captions, language captions. So they first pick up the landmark from the langu language instructions. Then they compare the landmark with the visual, the visual images they are getting from the street, street views. And they, they, they compute a score, whether they have um, observing some landmarks in the in the street view. If yes, then it will take the actions, you follow the instruction um, to take uh, actions, right? So they show that the LMA agent can be uh, can be quite effective to doing that by just uh, equipping them with the multimodal capabilities from clip models. So a further question to ask is like, can we also get rid of the lang language in instruction? Can we get rid of the instructions, right? Can we ask the LM agents to have to do a go directed navigations? For example, you want if you want to meet up with your friends, your friends just told you that I'm in the south of like a Starbucks or I'm in the south of a tower. The tower is quite visible from a large areas, right? So can you navigate based on that landmark? You don't have a instruction anymore. So it means you need to make your own decisions. So you need to be able to do spatial reasoning you need to have a memory knowing where you have been to. Yes, where you have you been to? And you should have a planning capabilities that can think several steps ahead. Can, can our agent do that? So um, we try to solve this um, by, you know, with this um, combination of this multi-model LMs and also this agentic workflows. So in, 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 in this framework, the LM agents have four key modules. One is like the landmark recognition. The second part is like how to infer the direction to the go to the go uh, um, go uh, locations in, because that it, it it doesn't have the instruction anymore, so they you need to infer the direct direction. The second is like a memory to to and planning, knowing where to go, you know where he has been to, and finally you can make a decision to interact with the world. So so it can be summarized into three uh, key mo 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 modules. So the first module is the spatial perception, it include the uh, visual encoders, you know, uh, translate the images into some languages and also the direction inference, like to inference the go directions from that uh, lang language description of the landmark. And then it has a memory mo 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 module, trying to maintain a working memory and a long-term memory that's episodic and also somatic. And finally, it needs planning and the de de decisions that can uh, learn the feedbacks from the environment and uh, plan several steps ahead. So um, we, we collect, uh, we can construct an uh, image um, 
conversation data to fine tune the multi model based mo uh, uh, multi model LRMs to in, in, in with the capabilities to recognize the landmark. So, for example, yes, this conversation uh, data set we asked the LRMs whether they have seen a specific landmark in the street views. If so, then where is the uh, where is the landmark? Which direction is the landmark, and how far it is uh, approximately? Right by fine tuning a lava model, which is a um, a quite small uh, open source uh, multi model um, language models with thirty k this conversation data we created for three hours on one a uh, one hundred um, uh, GPUs. We, we can see that the, its ability to recognize the uh, landmark in urban space has improved dramatically. So it can go, it can almost 100% identify any um, um, landmark in the images. And it also has a um, high accuracy in um, inference its di di directions, which is the IOU, like a, which direction it is in the, in the images. And the second part is the memory mechanisms. So we separate the memory into episodic memory, which is the very concrete memory of every thing it has done, every places it has been to. Okay, and also a somatic memory, which is a high level summary description of the movement history, where a summary of like where it has been to. So this two memory was retrieved um, when it's making each de decisions. And so the, the last part is the planning and the action behavior and the decision making behaviors. So we propose this um, and anticipate and reflect a uh, framework, which is like uh, before you take an, an actions, you first anticipate. So which this action will lead you to like if I knew I move north one step, then I, I can anticipate my uh, spatial relation with the landmark and with the goal di direction area will change to a um, to a to a different uh, scenarios um, based on some simple math math mathematics, right? And then we can have we have a real observation after we get there. So then we have a reflection. So this anticipate and the reflection can effectively syner synergize the uh, empirical observations and the memories and the reasoning powers, right? And uh, okay, we do a we conduct an experiment in Bei, Beijing and the Shanghai province. So um, we can see that um, this um, agent, agentic framework can outperform all the baseline by a lot, especially can out outperform the RL methods that has been trained with thousands of training trajectories. Uh, it is a um, NIPS paper several years ago. And uh, the uh, uh, ablation study shows each modules um, is quite effective uh, in achieving uh, in solving this task and uh, we, we in the case studies we also find this so this agent agents can produce more consistent navigation behavior so it doesn't have, have this ping pong effect that um, generated by a lot of AI models okay um, for the last last part I want to talk about the um, the re recently cost the reasoning cost of LLM. So I think the core of LLM agent is the LLM's ability for common sense reasoning, right? It's common sense reasoning power allow it to simulate and to re re reason a lot of stuff and become an a, a agent. So one of the most influential work is the train of thought. And I, I won't go into the details. I believe a lot of you are very familiar with, with this work. So it when by asking the LLM to Take a lot of inter inter intermediary steps to solve a complex reasoning problems. It released, it unleashed the scaling lot in the re reasoning pro the problems. So the LM's ability for complex reasoning improved by a lot through this kind of train of thought prompting. So after the train of thought, there have been several improvements. There have been several improved framework. Um, for example, from the self consistency, which is kind of uh, equivalent to uh, you are doing several channel thoughts in par parallel, and then you ask them to vote. Um, it's an, like an ensemble of channel of thoughts. And also this tree of thoughts, which, which is a uh, last year NIPS paper. And uh, it, used, uh, it asked LM to search for the re results in the tree structure, no longer a train structure. So following this line, you can see that the accuracy improved by a lot from channel thoughts to tree of thoughts improved by from 4% to 
to 74% um, in gain of 24, the, which is a math, mathematic and the logic uh, reasoning problems. So the in accuracy improved by a lot, but the token cost also improved by 100 times because you can see the source here, which is the, um, the searched unit here, improve, uh, grows very quickly, you know, under the, this line. So it becomes a challenge. So if you, are, you have ever simulated a, a system with hundreds or even dozens of LM agents, you, you will know it's very costly. It's very costly. It can easily cost you thousands of US dollars. So it's a very expensive problem. So how can we achieve um, efficient simulations, like inexpensive simulations? So we take inspiration from this dual process theory. So this dual process theory argue that we humans have two systems. Uh, one is like the system one is capable of fast, intuitive, but less accurate thinking, reasoning, right? And uh, another is the system two, which is slow. And it, it use a lot of mental cap capabilities. It, it, it use a lot of mental resources, but it's accurate, okay? So we humans are able to combine these two systems in, 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 the, in the reasonings. So it gives our this is inspiration. Can we also use create a similar framework that can exploit the synergy of larger and the smaller language models? So we can we use this larger, more expensive model for system two, like the highly accurate but expensive thinking, and then we use this smaller language models for the system one, like very fast but more more less accurate, less accurate thinking. Can we can we achieve that? So here we propose a default interventionist framework. So which use the smaller language models as for this default reasoning. So the default reasoning steps was taken by the smaller language models, but it, it will follow by a confidence evaluators. So we will ask this smaller language model to, general, to, to generate, uh, to reason several thoughts in parallel. And uh, we compare these several thoughts, which, which is considered as several intuitions. So if they agreed each other very well, then we believe they have, they have high confidence in this um, st intuition steps. Then we accept it as a, as a, a formal reasoning steps. If they, they, they have a lot of uh, contradiction between these intuitions, then it will show, I, I believe it, it shows that the confidence is low. Then it will trigger the, this framework to call a, larger language models for a reflective thinking. In this reflective thinking steps, you can go back to the, go back to the several steps generated by these smaller models and then make correction if needed. Okay, so it is, so this default and the interventionist framework effectively integrate the smaller language models and the larger language models in one reasoning framework steps. So this is um, the basic, uh, simple algorithm for these uh, models. So by default, it will ask the smaller language models to generate one intuitions. So after, se if, and we generate several intuitions in par parallel, and then we will estimate the confidence by uh, examining the, the, the consistency between this, the, this, uh, the output of the smaller lang lang language models. If it is low, then we will call the large, larger language models for a reflection steps to correct the potential errors uh, in the steps generated by the smaller language models. So because the, the larger language models and the smaller language models, their costs are, are different. They have a large, very large difference in their cost. Their, para, their parameter uh, number as, is uh, uh, different by several magnitude others. So they have, there's a large margin of profitable in, in intervention rates. It means the intervention rates can be quite high and it can still be profitable to when we're doing this um, default and interventionist framework. So we apply this uh, reasoning framework, but on a lot of reasoning benchmark, including this mass lo lo logic um, benchmark of this GAN of 24, and this logic grid puzzles, and also this creative reasoning uh, benchmark, like this creative writing, and also some open-ended reasoning problems, um, which doesn't have one solution, but it can be a lot of solutions um, in this space. Uh, we can see that. So th th this figure better show the re 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 results. We, we can see that 
so the x axis here is the diversity of the solutions. So if you have a higher diversity of solutions, then it's better. And the y axis is the accuracy of the solution of the solutions. The higher accuracy means better um, reasoning. And the the size the, the the size of the nodes shows the um, the token cost or the estimated t flops of the reasoning um, models. We can show that the um, our framework, the depth int, reduced the token cost by seventy five percent of across all all, all tasks, and the, it achieved the SOTA performance in the same time. So I think it showed that this this, this um, framework can be very effective to re to reduce to, to reduce the token cost of simulating a agents. So when we look at the empirical in intervention rates, so like how often you need to call and larger language models for intervention, right? For an effort for intervention. We find that the empirical intervention rate is between 10% to 30% for this even very complex written task. Uh, I believe it, it means even in this complex reasoning task, there's, there's a lot of intermediary steps that can, they are quite simple, they're quite straightforward. They can be effectively offloaded to smaller language models. So it can be a very uh, effective, effective strategies trying to um, combine the larger language models and the smaller language models. We also um, try this uh, framework on different configurations. We we use we, we have tried to use like GPT 3.5 as smaller models and the GPT 4 as the larger models. These two models are more close, you know, in the in the in the size of the parameters, right? And then we also try to use like the Mistral and the Llama, which is only seven billions or thirteen billions, which which is a very small model compared to GPT 4. And the and the, in this setting, the accuracy is also is is still very high, and the. the um, the token cost can be even lower in, in, in some settings. So I think this shows there's a lot of configuration can, can be com uh, profitable to combine this larger language model and a smaller language model. So here is a, a, a quick summary. Like we have a preprint paper about this uh, default and the interventionist framework for efficient reasoning. I think the takeaway lesson is that there's a large room for exploiting the synergy between smaller and the larger language models for reasoning for common sense reasoning. Okay. Um, in the last part of my uh, presentations, I want to uh, briefly introduce um, the platform we are building uh, for uh, city simulations. So the left uh, uh, figure shows the virtual uh, towns um, was used in the, um, in the generative agents. I think it's, a, uh, it's, it's still a simple and a quite finite uh, space uh, compared to the real world system, right? So, and uh, if we can have like a more complex, even open-ended um, urban system environment, then the complexity of the city simulation can go to, maybe go to an, an, another level. So in our proposed um, framework uh, platforms, they have a language interface between the city simulator that um, include a, a lot of data sources and uh, um, the infrastructure of the cities and the, and it expose all these um, simulators capabilities as the natural language to this um, upper, you know, city GBT or these generative agents. And uh, we can build application based on uh, by the combination of these agents, which which can be you know easily programmed by humans. So I also prepare a, a, a small videos for this platform we build. I'm I'm sorry, I it, it's still in in, in Chinese. <laughs> uh, it takes a, a lot of effort, and I. Um, think to translate um, the platform. So I, I didn't finish this in, in time. But in this uh, video, it briefly showed that. So for the left part, it is the profile of these agents. So like this is a college student with some kind of some profiles. And the, the right console is like the, the inner monologue. It's like the thinking, the thinking of these agents, the reasoning of the LRMs. And the, it will allow these agents to make decisions and go to different places in the cities and to ex explore the cities, right? Um, here we show that how this is like the, the, the life trajectory or like the daily, uh, daily uh, movements we simulate for, uh, for different profile with our uh, platforms, like college students, like a white collar uh, uh, workers, uh, also like a re retired persons, um, different kind of profiles. So uh, 
that is a 3D uh, simulator, which is uh, quite heavy. And uh, we are also building a more lightweight 2D web portals. We want to just like be more uh, open and uh, the people from different backgrounds can ac access this kind of platform to do some interesting simulations. So you can, you can access this uh, platform now through this uh, URL actually. So, and then we also, we want to make this like a codeless platform. So, I mean, people from all backgrounds can deploy agents. So it can be deployed only with several clicks, right? You can create an app, app applications and uh, deploy some default agents with certain profiles. Then you can just run them in, 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 the, in the web portals. And of course, you can, you, you, can, you can write some code, you can write some prompts if you want, but you can, you can do you know, codeless. Uh, also, and uh, yeah, so this is what, what it looks like. It's still under construction, mainly uh, for the visualization. So yeah, and I also have a small videos um, here showing the you know the the web portal, uh, what web portal looks like right now. So it can yeah, it, it will provide the visual feedbacks for these agents, and you uh, reasoning about you know what what they see, what they find nearby, and uh, Make a decision. You can go 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 to a new places, and you will also see new images and find new places nearby. And uh, yeah, you, you, in this way, we can ground it, this LLM agents in the virtual city space, which is a um, yeah, it's a digital twins of the real cities. Okay, and the, we we can also simulate a, a multi multi agent systems. So we can host um um. 10,000 LLM agents in this platform right, right, right now. So yeah, and but you need to use your own API key. Yeah, because it, the token cost is quite high. And uh, uh, if you all, you really want to stimulate a lot of agents, you need, to, you need to also contact us first. You know, the computation cost is also very high. I think you can, you can simulate a dozen, you know, by, by yourself. Okay, so um, that's my presentation for the uh, city simulations. Okay. In the end of this, I will also talk a few. Um, I will also throw out several um, questions I have for, like, for maybe as the starter of this open discussion, which can you know um, continue after this uh, tutorial, I believe. So this is some question I have, uh, some puzzle I have for um, simulating mostly simulating city systems with LMs. I think one of the problem is this last serendipity. Serendipity is like the last randomness but it's like in a more subtle way so for example if you have run this generative agent systems for a long 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 time you will know no noticed after a few days of simulation they will have a lot of rep, rep, repetitive behaviors so if, if you have a lot of repetitive maybe that's the, the routine of human life but it, if you it looks a little a little odd you know it's a more repetitive than the routines and I think it could be me. Maybe it can be a quite fundamental problems for LLM agents because the the G, the GPTs, the language models, they are pro, they are programmed to select the lowest perplexity token each time, right? To predicting the next location, they are, they are programmed to select the less perplexity tokens. So people is actually used as a, one of the key features to de 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 detect the GPT generated text. So if you ask a GPT to generate a very long text, the, the entropy of this um, text is much lower than a human, human generated con contents. So I think that could be one of the problems. Maybe we, when we are using the LM agents to simulate a system, maybe we create a di digital utopia that's without any accidents, without surprise. It could be a quite fundamental problem, maybe. And uh, another problem is, I think, is the representativeness of the generations. So there's, there's several recent studies explore the representativeness of the LLM simulated survey survey responses in the political science and also in uh, AI con 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 conferences. But how about the simulated behaviors? I think that's also a very important uh, problem. So. When we're talking about the representativeness of the simulated behavior, it's, it's a different uh, kind of mat metric, different kind of performance than the generating behavior, behavior data. It's no longer the, the statistic, but it's like, can this, um, can this generated behavior represent several uh, certain subgroups of people living there, right? So I think one of the very important application is the travel survey. Can you can represent the people really living live, live there? 
then the third problem I think about is as I think of is this biases and their compounding effect. So I think there's no secret that there's a lot of, a lot of biases in the language models. So there's one a peanuts paper last year showing that if you ask the LLM to um, to uh, pass along the some contents in the train, right? Pass along the contents in the transmission train, then it will show this um, stereotype more and more after you know the 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 the, the train it, it passed down. So it will you know omit the, the the stereotype inconsistent informations more easily, but keep the stereotype um, consistent contents in the train of train tra tra transmissions. And as we talk about very early in our presentation, so one of the key topic in this city science is this agglomerations and emergence of the agents. So how will this bias, what will this bias look like when we have a lot of agents simulating in the same space? We do have some compounding effects. And when we trans have this kind of like a, maybe segregation or effect phenomena like human societies. And the, um, another, I think, very important problems I, I care about is like how we can go from behavior to experience. So right now, these LM agents, they can use to generate a lot of behavior very faithfully, maybe you, you can say, maybe with uh, uh, human-like. But this, is, this experience um, is become a very key topics in a lot of urban studies. For example, in one of last year's uh, na nature paper, they go beyond from this re residential segregation to experience segregation. It's like how se segregated is your daily encounter. It's not where you live, but the people you meet day daily. So can this element agents notice this un unjust experience in simulations? If, if, if they can, then you, I think it'd be very important. You can, you can just simulate this system and uh, you know, evaluate the experience segregations, which is important because if we, they, uh, they, it, can, it can be a very important data sources. And, uh, uh, and another very interesting um, application could be this participatory planning. So this kind of urban planning requires the planner to listen to the right re re residents uh, in the community when making their plans. Which is is very difficult, and it, maybe some someone we even argue is infeasible. You know, we making urban plans. But if we had, we can stimulate um, this uh, homo silicus, homo silicus that can generate you know human like experience, you know responses. Given certain urban planning, then I think you can realize this participatory planning in in, in some different ways. And uh, okay, um, that's all my presentation. And here is a. Uh, survey of our tutorial, materials in our survey tutorial. Thank you.